Okay. Hey, welcome back to the number one podcast in the world, Sellercast episode 110. Isn't that exciting, baby? Yeah. We're at Okay. <laughs> She's far away from the mic. Yeah. We've I, got... I, I need to I need to speak up. Yeah, it's a cat episode. We're in person. Mm-hmm. Live from cat, my house. From Cat's brother's bedroom. Uh because he's gone. Yeah, he's not here. Yeah, he doesn't know. He, he will never know. He doesn't that... know I farted on his bed just now. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> uh how, to, to, I, mean, I just talk about my week or whatever, but I did like nothing. We were trying to figure out topics just now. Yeah, because yeah. we knew what we were gonna, but we were knew what we, what we were gonna talk about. But I was like, you, you were like, oh wait, is there any gaming stuff? And I'm like, I, I just worked on the video this week. Yeah, <laughs> I was just, I was on that grind. Very slow week. I was on the rise and grind, uh, lifestyle. So there's a couple things I do want to check out, but mm-hmm. I just never got around to, like some, some. Games, some games, some G E E M S. Yeah, games. Full <laughs> fiction. Uh, I was thinking the photo editing software. Yeah, you can't you can't make a facial expression because it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't translate through <laughs> into tech into into sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can you make a louder facial expression? Oh wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm at Cats right now because we're going to, uh... California's Great America. We're going to Biden's Great America. Biden's Great America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, former Paramount Park. Yeah. So I'm staying over and I was like, let's record the, the one podcast. Bring my microphone. Yeah. And apparently I'm going to have to, like, not keep take it out of my backpack before we get to great america because if i bring a microphone they're gonna shoot me on sight <laughs> they're gonna, you'll get jfk they're on gonna, yeah they're, <laughs> they got a sniper and i'll be like jackie i'll dodge it yeah you're gonna be like um i'm gonna be like uh okay i just smacked the shit out of the wire <laughs> i think that showed up on it uh yeah i'm gonna be like um i'm gonna be like uh judy hops oh what you know the Zootopia abortion comic? God, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how it, how it, the, like, the fourth part ends with, like, a reenactment the, the, of... The, the Kennedy assassination? Dude, I was watching the Justin Wang video on that. Uh-huh. And when she gets into the car, I was like, it's weird, why is she dressed like that? <laughs> and then it goes to the panel where it's, like, it pulls out, I'm like, what's with this angle? And then yeah. you see the crosshair. I'm like, it's like a, yeah, yeah no. quite literally a crosshair. No. <laughs> that was good. That was really good. <laughs> That was awesome. Uh, so I guess we want to talk about. We have a lot more movie, more, stuff, more movie stuff, a lot more eyeball stuff, and less hand stuff to talk about this week. <laughs> so, but we want to. So let's get the gaming stuff well, out yeah. of the way, which is pretty much. What have you been playing? What have you been playing? Anything interesting? Me? Yeah. Uh, I have. I've, been, I've finished my first Gex game. Is that the first one you finished? Yeah. Is Gex three? Yeah. I never. I played one, but it's kind of boring. Okay. Uh, two. Tony Gex is boring. Yeah, I can't believe I said that. Dude, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Gex two, I never beat because it was really hard. Okay. Gex three is like the easiest one of the three, easily. Really? Yeah. Is it easy, or are you just it's better easy, at it? but it's also really hard. There are some levels uh-huh. that where it's like straight up, I cannot. I don't know if maybe it's the controls or, or if it's just I don't know what. Like, Gex's jump is not very... He needs a double jump. Oh. He needs a double jump. Because some of those jumps are impossible to make. Really? Though there's a mythology level that's based around, like, Greek... Greek, uh, mytho- Greek myth. Greek, Greek myth. Yeah. And there are some ledges shaped like uh, pillars. Mm-hmm. Straight up are impossible to jump. Oh, ask. And I was just like, man, fuck this. <laughs> Thankfully, you don't... It's a... If you've never played Gex... Three, two or three. It's basically a Mario sixty four collectathon. Oh, I didn't know that. So you collect remotes to beat levels to get to the final boss. You need there's about fifty to sixty total remotes. Uh-huh. You need thirty to get to the final boss. That's oh, like that's that's yeah. like really easy. Yeah, so I easy. I breeze through. I there were some levels I was just able to like man fuck it uh-huh. I'll skip this. And uh, yeah, the game ends with uh, Gex having sex with a Playboy model. He has Gex. He has Gex. Gex is short for gay sex. 
That's what that's that was that's like some that's some San Francisco slang. That is some San Francisco. They say like <laughs> hey you wanna hey dude, they were doing some gex yeah, back yeah, there. They were doing some gex. <laughs> you know the the guy who played Alf's dad on Alf <laughs> He was in some Gex films. Yeah, he was in some Gex films. Do people know about that? Is that a widely known thing? Uh, the guy who played the dad in, in, in Gek. Elf. Oh, no, in not Gex. in Gex. <laughs> no, he had Gex. He had Gex. He did a bunch of cocaine and did gay porn. Did, um, I really, it's only really only a thing that if you, it's like one of like you know, like those tabloid things. Where it's like like fucked up things that 80s stars oh, yeah. did like yeah. you'd see in a tabloid. Mm-hmm. That's mostly stuff you would see on that thing, it, unless you're like a. But dive. it was real. It's, yeah. Unless you're a diehard fan of you're Elf. An, you're an Elf head? Yeah, they're not... Oh, they? I, I was going to say, like, there's no way you can bring back Elf now, but... Uh, they are, aren't they doing it? They're doing an Elf reboot with the involvement of Ryan Reynolds and the original creator. Is he playing Elf? No, the original creator is coming back to play Elf. Did he always play Elf? Paul Fusco. His, he, he's still alive, and he he's always did the voice for Elf, so I assume... I think he does the puppeteering for Elf, too, so... He, did, I, did he always play Elf? Yes. Yeah. Wasn't he didn't he say the N word a bunch? Yes, he did, unfortunately. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I think people I don't think there's enough people that know about that, unfortunately, which that, sucks. That's awesome because it ties into the theme of today's episode, which, which is, is bigotry. <laughs> that's the overarching theme. Why'd you introduce that like it's a Sesame Street theme? Today's the theme of the day of today <laughs> is, is bigotry. bigotry. <laughs> hey dude, it's like it's like it's like I always said, you go bigot or you go homo. I thought it was go bigotry or go hometry. I thought go go bigot or go homo is. I think it. I think it works. <laughs> sure, you could potentially be a homo and a bigot. Isn't that technically the same thing? What do you think a homo is? Fine. Oh, never mind. What, do you, what did you think it was? I, I was. I meant. I was thinking homophobic. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it means homosexual. No, no, yeah, yeah. I realize. I'm like, oh wait, you no. Know, people who have gex. Yeah, yeah, people who have gex. G- gay gex. <laughs> gay sex. G- gay sex. G- gay sex machina. Gay, gay the, the 1999 classic. Sorry, 2000. Gay sex was 2000. Yeah, gay yeah. sex. Yeah. Uh, deu sex. <laughs> They're having gex. I'm having deu sex. Deu sex. Yeah uh gaming stuff before we get into the racism uh only one of them really only, no <laughs> just, there's a couple racisms in here no just one no there's a there's okay one there's other. at least there's two there's okay. two there's two yeah there's okay two. i just think it's funny that it happened twice that we live in a <laughs> it's like that dr doofenshmirtz meme that's what i'm ra- yeah that's <laughs> what i was yeah okay uh so there's a couple announcements from evo today or sorry well this this weekend by the way we're recording this on saturday at like 6 p.m so all the biggest evo announcements that's gonna be like for guilty gear and uh street fighter like those have not happened yet evo ends today tomorrow tomorrow oh it's I, the weekend okay the yeah. whole weekend all the right. whole weekend and well yesterday I was, we were both like, oh, because there were panels that we wanted to check out. There was an Arxis panel that I wanted to see. Mm-hmm. And then you had the Nick All-Star Brawl. Brawls. Which is apparently supposed to be a mystery panel. It's it, not supposed to be announced beforehand. But I think the game got announced beforehand. And they're just like, yeah, this is the mystery panel. Yeah. Oh, really? Apparently, it, apparently it was supposed to be, like, because they had Evo, like, stuff listed. Uh-huh. The slot that uh, Naz Two had it was a, it said mystery. Was that just before the game? That was, was announced? before the game got announced. Oh, that's probably what that is. I don't know. They if... probably worked with them beforehand. Yeah, and... I don't know if that was intentional or not, but I'm assuming yeah. it was. It wasn't like oopsie. Yeah, oopsie. Yeah, I don't think it was an accident. So, so uh, I was really stressing about missing this panel, and I woke up late, which meant that by the time it started, I was on the bus. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, gonna, you just barely got here. They're going to announce. No, when it started, I was on the bus. And it was the Arxis guys. And everyone in the chat was like, play the Mortal Kombat. Give us Reptile. Did we get a uh, MK? No, MK? nothing MK happened, even though they're, they're fine. The whole tournament was uh, it's, yesterday. It's weird that people were clamoring for I'm, MK, even though there were barely anyone there. Yeah, MK. I never talked about that in the podcast. But the numbers came out for entrance for every individual tournament. And there's like, you know, um, people who enter multiple tournaments. So there's like overlap and stuff. But MK had like, it was the last one. Yeah. It was in last place. It had less 
entrance than Melty Blood, which is Melty Blood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that was very surprising, even for a game that's like technically like end of life, pretty much. Mm-hmm. People, I mean, people were still playing Street Fighter V like long after highest or second highest entrance last year Mm -hmm. and we already knew about six and all that so uh when i got off the bus (laughs) they were like so the arxis panel was fuck it was nothing it was literally nothing it It was was, yeah it was surprise it was so i was like why did you guys even have this it feels like they were like we're gonna talk about strive it feels like the concept art you want you unlock after 100 percenting a game (laughs) yeah quite literally every japanese stream does this i've just gotten used to it by now that's like okay are you gonna so show something or is it gonna be like because whenever in a like a western dev or like you know does something Mm-hmm. Pretty much anyone who's not Japanese. Oh, we're gonna do a, a panel at this thing. You you assume there's gonna be some kind of reveal, mm-hmm. and then all the little interview like retrospect stuff. That's all just a little bonus, right? Yeah. In Jap- Japan, they're like, "Don't you like this? <laughs> we're gonna do it. We're gonna we're gonna show you concept art. <laughs> you like Guilty Gear? Yeah, you like it. Wow. Yeah, we're gonna talk about. We're gonna slowly awkwardly talk over concept art of <laughs> the game. Yeah, through like two different translators, and we're yeah. gonna do that for thirty. Granted, words. some of it was cute. Some of it was cute. Um, the, okay, I that I just got a random notification. Uh, I totally threw, threw off my thrain of thought. <laughs> Suffer and suck a test. Suffer and suck. I hate suck a test. Suck ass. Suck ass. I hate suck ass. Hate suck ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah, speaking of, and right before that, I guess the first real announcement of Evo was Unist 2, or Undernight 2. Cis Celeste. Cis colon Celeste. They're never going to come up with a good name for one of these Cist, things. Like the insect? What? Cyst? No, cis. Oh, cis. Yeah, not like the, like system, not like the slur, you know. Sis, yeah. <laughs> My favorite slur. Babe, I want you to know that yeah. you have the C pass. What's the C pass? The C word pass. You can say sis. Hey, sis. Yeah, see? Like, it's... I said it was okay for her to do that. I gave her I gave her permission. Give me the beat. Boys. And if there's any... If there's any trans people watching or anything like that... You guys, I'm distributing cis passes to you guys. So you you can drop it with the hard S or the hard R. The, the, you want to do the whole cisgender thing. That's fine by me. Um, and if if Elon starts giving you shit about it, just tell him that Tygen said it was okay. And I'm I'm the arbiter, so I uh, I say that I say I just I get to decide. Anyway, Undernight, yeah, uh, I saw they played a trailer and then they f- awkwardly fumbled over concept art and they were like, um, this is Enkidu and, um, this is what he looks like. <laughs> <laughs> and we wanted to show his powers in the art. And I'm like, oh, this is good. This, this is. I feel at home now. Uh, after that, it was the Guilty Gear thing where they basically showed off nothing, and they were like, "Isn't this cool?" Uh, no, they did. They were shit. When I got off the bus, they had just started. They were like, "We're gonna throw it over to some indie fighting games," which is like not yeah. what not what anyone was there for yeah. <laughs> at all. And the they started playing a trailer for a drag queen fighting was it a game. RuPaul dr- no, not RuPaul, but okay. it was just a drag queen a general fighting general game. Okay. I believe it's called Drag Her. And uh, all, all the... I was like, this is so awesome. All the MK bros in the chat were so fucking mad. They were so mad. They were like, Dude, what is this? this is ah, it. show me reptile. <laughs> to quote someone that I once knew about yeah. th- th- that knew about this game, this is a theater kid Smash Bros right here. <laughs> drag her oh wait you knew you've heard of this before i think someone mentioned this to me like in passing but i don't really give a okay. shit because i don't <laughs> care about okay i'm just gonna throw this out here i don't watch rupaul i don't watch drag queen what the fuck i know you don't watch rupaul 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 because rupaul? Rupaul? like everyone in my my th- every pe- person i've met in a theater class yeah has 
like they just never shut up about the gexers love it yeah the gexers love it yeah and i'm just here like <laughs> i'm seriously quite literally one of the only people i think that that people have ever met that was like you're a theater kid but you never watched oh my god RuPaul's drag race i'm like Dude, was this like a fucking commandment? I think some the, commandment. The, the, the LGBT show. Ten Commandments: Thou shalt watch the RuPaul's Drag Race. The 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 stone. I gotta whisper this in her ear. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't pick up. Don't say it. He, and he he said something stupid. Don't I worry. said a dumb thing. Yeah. Uh, people said that I've gotten that at least one time myself. What? Not because I'm a theater kid, but because I used uh, people like knew me and in high school that i would i would like wear dresses and stuff the one dress you wore well people knew that i did it uh -huh. and i was like they were like do you watch do you watch rupaul i was like no it's a little gay for me <laughs> it is i just <laughs> i just i just, just, just when, they make care, it, bro. when they make a show about straight guys wearing dresses and i'll i'll maybe i'll check it out you know <laughs> but <laughs> uh what the fuck were we oh yeah Evo right. stuff so, so that yeah. was that uh yeah nothing on guilty gear i'm assuming they've got to talk about at... it'd be funny if they announced something today while we're doing the podcast well no they'll do it at finals which is tomorrow tomorrow, tomorrow. Okay. uh so we'll be a great america mm -hmm. <laughs> and wait the... for the next podcast if you want to hear about yeah that. and uh i'm assuming well I'm, it's got to be okay who do you think the first well it's, i'm assuming it's going to be see the season three reveal Mm -hmm. They're probably gonna show off the new, the first character of the season. Mm -hmm. They're probably gonna show off some story mode stuff, mm -hmm. and they're probably gonna show off some new mechanics. And maybe instant. I'm, I'm calling my hard call is that it's gonna be inst They're gonna show off instant kills, which I think they want to implement now because they have the budget, and it was not in the initial like budget planning for Strive was only planned up to season two. I see. So they're having a season three like battle pass type thing. Yes. So who do you think is gonna be? <laughs> I think it, yeah. I think it's gonna be your boy. It's gonna be Zelaya. I I feel like I. Okay. Who else are they gonna choose? Well, there's so there's a lot of Strive's roster. Honestly, pretty good. I feel like we have most characters that people want. Oh now. fuck no! Really? Oh, no. Who are we missing? So the thing about Guilty Gear is that unlike Street Fighter, where there's a lot of cast members that you could be like, eh, they don't. I don't need a Fuerte back. <laughs> uh -huh, Guilty Gear yeah. kind of like everyone's cool. Mm -hmm. so, so uh, everybody everybody wants everyone back. slayer is missing johnny's missing uh johnny's not in there no he's really? not in, no, i feel he, like no, he was okay nope he's not in in strive right. uh dizzy is not in yet oh um, yeah that's a good and choice. then there's a lot of other characters that are uh, oh venom venom's another really popular one mm -hmm. and then there's a lot of other characters who are like i guess a tier below but have like people think are really cool like abba or robokai who would be good, like, kind of Ooh, Abba would be a really good one. Oh, Elfelt also. Mm -hmm. The the Battle Bride. That's her. You know her. Wow. I'm surprised yeah. she's not in Strive yet. Yeah. yeah. So there are some good choices. Yeah. So there's haven't... still, like, a lot There's of characters. A I feel like you could go up to, like, a fourth season. Oh, I think it I'm, I'm assuming enough. it'll go to at least four, four. maybe five. Because that's not even counting new characters. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and technically, I'm trying to think how many new characters are on the roster it's kind of tech like actually new characters it's kind of just gold lewis and like who were dlc yeah because gold it, lewis dlc yeah he was the first season, season ah, new character. okay, okay. Uh, technically asuka oh and happy chaos technically asuka's Delilah like Lila to an extent well no it's bedman it's bedman uh, okay. uh bedman Bed question mark question, question mark? mark and you have to write it with the question, question mark every mark. time so I think they're probably going to kick it off with like a fan favorite character. Like the first one of season two was Sin. Uh-huh. And then, yeah. And then season two was... Season two was Sin, Bridget, uh, Bedman. Bedman. Sorry, Bedman? Asuka. Not the German girl. Yes. Not, I... not that one. <laughs> no, I know. Uh, so my, my bet would be probably like... Venom or Robokai? No, I would think Johnny, actually. You'd think Johnny? Johnny or maybe Slayer. And then I feel like you could probably do Venom later on in the season. How many characters? Four in a season? Yeah, pretty I think four. the season would be Johnny, Sin, Robokai, Venom, and Slayer. I think those are the choices. That's five. 
Is it Johnny Sin, Robokai, Venom, Slayer? Oh, sorry, I meant Johnny Slayer, Robokai, and Venom. Yeah. I would throw in Abba or Elfbelt in there, maybe, but it's we'll see. Yeah, and I feel like they had what two like a character, a new character each in each season. Technically, yeah. So I would probably say like a new character. Yeah, like one new character. One new character. The pro- yeah, that's the problem with Guilty Gear is everyone's cool. So <laughs> and then there's a, there's a new character, and then and like it's like, like, oh, what if you need like new character? You should have new characters in a game, right? Yeah. But it's like, <laughs> yeah. So so let's say three characters had to make it. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna guess the one tomorrow will be Johnny. Johnny. And yeah. Then if it's Slayer, then I'll well, then sh- that's then a good day. Then I'll come. That's a good day. Then then I'll you'll jizz my jizz my pants. You'll jizz. You'll ejaculate yeah. in yeah. in a public. Yeah, in a like Great America. I'll be watching. I feel like I'll be the one doing I'm, that too. What? I'm gonna go on a roller coaster. Damn it! What do you mean you're gonna come on the roller coaster? Piss my pants. That. What do you think jizzing means? Never mind. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That was a thing. I saw a collection of screenshots the other day of people, <laughs> instances, people telling stories about how they uh, misunderstood what words meant. Uh-huh. So, so one guy was like, oh, I, uh, I, when I was a kid, I thought that getting sodomized just meant like getting a, like totally obliterated at something, like totally crushed. And he's like, yeah, and then... You make it sound like a fighting game term. Well, yeah, it means like you, like, like got... Yeah. Like, oh. So, after, like... He says, yeah, that stopped when my... When the Orioles lost a playoff game. And I said, wow, we really got sodomized out there. And, and my dad yelled at me. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. There was another one that was, like, a guy... He thought, he thought jacking off was, like, messing around. <laughs> Probably because he heard it and like, stop, yeah, stop yeah. jacking off back stop there. Stop jacking around there, yeah. And stop jacking around. <laughs> stop jacking off back there. So he would told his teacher like in the fifth grade, like, yeah, I went over to my friend Roy's house. And um, we went in his backyard and jacked off with the dog. <laughs> 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 oh, no. <laughs> like, what? What? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, oh. oh, and then there was someone who thought that jizzing meant like peeing and they wasn't far off and they asked their teacher if they could go take a jizz technically kind of is no it's not it's people still do think that no one what are you talking about i've heard people use jizz to say peeing where there's a a whole lonely island song about it no he's orgasming Okay. You think it's pit, dude? You cannot be fucking. Serious. Are you joking with me right now? <laughs> You're fucking with me right now, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Okay, thank God. Because I don't know. I don't know with you. That's sure you can never tell if I'm joking. <laughs> I can't tell if you. What's going on in this head? Uh. Uh. Anyway. That's drive. Unless you have anything else to say. No. Uh, uh, Bridget looked like Enid in that one concept art. Oh, oh, the one where she's in the pink sweater. Pink sweater. I'm That's like, a cute one. There's no way. That was something they did with a fashion brand or something like that. Oh, oh cool. Yeah. Uh, Garo. New Garo. It got a name and they showed off a thing. It's it's City of Wolves. It's my favorite song from uh, La La, La, La Land. Land. Yeah, so you, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know. That's the City, song that... City of Wolves. Don't you want to have uh, for me? City of Wolves, uh, triple guys are just for me. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> That's a move. That's a Terry super. Oh, uh, you made it sound like Ryan Gosling had triple guys. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see that, go watch Barbie. Because <laughs> he quite literally got. Yeah, he's got he's got triple guys. He does. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan Gosling should play Terry Bogard. That sounds like something that, like, unironically, someone would take seriously. No, I, th- I well, I'm saying it seriously. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, why not? Why not? He'd be literally. I be... think he'd be a good Rock Howard. <laughs> yeah. No, he's too. Rock Howard's like a young teenager. That's true. I... Yeah, you know, he's because Ron Gosling's more rugged. I think he's perfect for, <laughs> for, for <Terry>. rugged. <laughs> That's he funny. is. I guess he is. <laughs> yeah, I'd say like get. I don't know who's fucking blonde and young. Zac Efron. I don't know. Have you seen those pictures of Zac Efron with the big ass chin? 
Ahab, his yeah. big old jaw. <laughs> yeah. It's like he's been taking anchor arms, but for his jaw. <laughs> like, if they had one of those, yeah. you just inflate it. <laughs> hey, speaking of anchor arms, Nick All-Star Brawl 2. Oh, oh see yeah. that? Check that out. Not really much to talk about there. It was um, just kind of like a mechanic showcase. Like they they revamped a lot of at least yeah. for SpongeBob. Speaking of Guilty Gear, okay, they just turned it into Guilty Gear. They did, yeah. There were moves that characters spe- they really only showed up SpongeBob and Patrick. Yeah, and there was some stuff where it's like this, they're straight up taken from like Guilty Gear, Blaze Blue, yeah, a little bit of like so, other other fighting games. If no one caught it. There's a uh, Nick All Star Brawl Two has a new uh, meter system. It's called like the slime. It's meter, the slime, which meter. is apparently a thing from the Kids Choice Awards, which is two thousand eight. Two thousand eight Kids, Kids Choice, Choice Awards. Awards. Put some respect on, on, that, its, name. on that name. <laughs> and uh, you can spend. So it's like a it's like a traditional fighter super meter yeah. where there are supers which are like final smashes basically for the for 100 percent of the bar but then you can spend it to do ex moves and also uh there's roman cancels Mm -hmm. and you can roman cancel anything and you can roman cancel your own recovery so you could just do it twice i think yeah uh and then there's uh what else oh there was another one other thing with this the, the slime meter I think that was that it. Oh, there's a no. There's a, there's a burst. Yes, there's yeah, literally a, a burst. like a you anime use, fighter burst. You can use it for certain yeah to like upgrade certain moves. In the case of SpongeBob, it's like triple bubbles. Yeah, I don't know what the other characters will have, but we'll find out. Yeah, uh, and then there's air dashing as well. Air dashing, wave dashing was in the last one. And there's wa- yeah, which I'm like, this is weird. This is interesting. Yeah, <laughs> for a a platform, for a platform fighter to fighter. do. I'm like, okay. Um, and then anything else that interested you about it? Oh, uh, other than the reveal of Plankton, who looks really cool. He looks oh, like yeah, the Oh, yeah, he's in a big mech. <laughs> he's and he has, he has Tager's command grab he animation does, where yeah. he flips upside down. Which is really That's cool. Awesome. Um, yeah. Oh, Plankton. Yeah, I, it would be a nice surprise if the roster didn't get leaked. Oh, yeah. You don't like the roster, do you? Um, just put it shortly. I like Angry Beavers. I like El Tigre. I like Azula. Ember McLean's kind of cool, but mm-hmm. I think really the big ones are just the two Hey Arnold reps, which was <laughs> Gerald and Arnold's grandma. I don't know shit about Hey Arnold. I like Hey Arnold as a show. Oh, Gerald is his friend with the big with the Marge Simpson hair. Yes, yeah. yeah. It's just that people are just like, and then his grandma. Yeah, which was like the what? Why the, the f- grandma? Okay, I guess because the grand the show the grandma is really fucking crazy. Okay, <laughs> she's like. I guess I guess they're trying to do like another Hugh Neutron, like another like out there pick, but with Hugh Neutron, people make well because Hugh Neutron's actually a meme. He's a meme. People would meme that. So I was like, why didn't you just choose a character that's like a meme? Like, I'm just saying, Ludosity, if you're listening, can you put? They're Odin? not listening. I Otis? know. I just want my Otis my... is not a meme. Come on, that just you yes, like he Otis. is. No, he's not a perhaps. Meme. <laughs> the... Don't don't look at me and say perhaps like that. Yeah, that's you've never seen that meme where it's like oh? it's like Otis where he's just like. It's like when he's oh, like taunting the mailman. You can't make that face. It's does it's not on audio. Make the face into the microphone. Okay, <laughs> now you guys can hear it. Um There's a lot of Barnyard. I think Barnyard has fine. enough meme power to be in a game. Fine. Okay. If not, like just I relent. Fine. Who else are they yeah. gonna choose? Chalk Zone, Rocket Power. I know Timmy Turner has problems with the yeah, rights, yeah. but like what fucking Mr. Meaty? Cock Zone? Cocket power? Cocket power. <laughs> Cocket shower? Cocket shower. Yeah. The milking machine? The mi- save that for no, the save there, that yeah. for later. Speaking uh, of Nickelodeon, is, we'll there, get to any, that later. is there anything else with chaos? Uh, sorry, with NAS Nas blue, uh, with the NASDAQ? I don't know. I think it's really it. Yeah. Not much. Pretty then, good sh- pretty good showcase. And then the last one was uh, apparently KI is getting a balance patch five years after it ended support. And a really cute way to to show it off oh yeah so they did the thing if anyone missed it uh the reveal was it was maximilian dude the biggest fgc content creator is he really oh yeah easily Mm, interesting um and he um 
Well, he was. Well, he's he. He's had a super close relationship to KI. He was technically part of the development team. Yeah. He was he like an him. unofficial consultant. I was telling, telling her last night. Mm-hmm. He was an unofficial consultant on it. And then he also later ended up editing the trailers for the game. Mm-hmm. So he loves that game. And that's... KI is one of those games that like it has that like... <laughs> there's a group of people and they're never going to let go of it. <laughs> yeah, it's like that's niche... Like, group of people. Yeah, niches. Well, the thing is that KI... Have you ever played it? KI I've only played the original. Okay. KI 2013 is really unique. Mm-hmm. It kind of... It, there's real... Honestly, like, nothing... No other fighting game that's Is it really closer like to, like, a... I don't know, like, an MK or a Street Fighter? No, than... it's completely its own thing. Really? I actually don't know... I actually don't... I've never really played classic... M, sorry, um... The original? Classic KI. I've, I've played modern the 2013 the reboot uh-huh. uh but no like it has like a completely i could explain like the combo system and everything but it would take a while but it, it's really cool uh-huh and 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 different and a lot of people are are it, it's the only place you can go for something like that so mm-hmm. people have people go gaga for it and uh so the fact that it's getting so the way there was the way they revealed it was similar to how they what they did when they revealed that Marvel vs. Capcom three was gonna be at Evo as a main stage game, which was where they had did like a pre recorded thing with Maximilian and then like on his stream he was like, Hey guys, I gotta I gotta I gotta I gotta head out for a second. I gotta I gotta <laughs> I got. I gotta get. I gotta go to do something. Yeah. And then he pops up on the stream. <laughs> or in the in the in the, 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 in the video, video, like on that he's watching or whatever. It was pretty cute. It is really and nice. And then the he was it was like him talking to the dev, and then the dev shows up and he walks on stage, and then Cat was like, "How do you get there so fast?" Oh my god, that was so funny. So that's how I, why I don't know. That's how I. That's why I say I can't. I, can't, I never know with you, because she was literally like. Because it was like an obviously pre-recorded thing, like in his house. I legit thought it was like a live. And then he walks out, and he's just wearing the same shirt to make like it look. And she goes, "How do you get there so fast?" I think that's what fucked me over. Yeah, he's wearing it's the same shirt. I'm like, is was that was the magic trick worked? <laughs> yeah, he like Rick and Morty teleported over there. Yeah. I'm like okay, cool. So that's cool. Uh... Was that all for Evo? I think. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh... That was quick. Well, the, I mean the. So the KI thing's cool because people have been wanting a new one for a while. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, hey, here's a thing that Microsoft owns. You guys want to do something is with that? Is KI still owned by Rare? Uh, or is it passed no. off? No. Well, I I actually don't know. Because well, I know, Mi- I know the Battletoads are in the, in the new one, right? Yeah. So, okay, My, so well, I think is... Microsoft just owns it. Okay. Microsoft they... just owns the property. Okay. So they can license it out to whoever. Because re- what has Rare even done? Recently? Yeah. Sea of Thieves. I think that's it. Right. They did do Sea of Thieves. Are they, do- are they doing the Perfect Dark thing? No. There's a Perfect Dark remake? Re- it's re- not a remake. Re- I don't I don't know what the a, hell a it new is. Game? I didn't know one. that. I had no yeah, idea. Yeah, it had like one trailer. When? Like a year ago at the Game Awards or something? Like last year's Game Awards? Something like that. Or a state of play... It got shown off, and then there's, like, been nothing about it. Oh, it's like a Metroid Prime type thing. Metroid Prime 4? Yeah. yeah like, I, maybe? It's like, hey, we're working on this. We're never, if it's real. If it's real, yeah. It was just, like, a pre-rendered thing. Like, just like a, oh, um, hey, it's coming out. Yeah, even I didn't um, know about that. Yeah, I'm surprised you actually didn't yeah, hear about I, that. Yeah, I would have been crazy for that perfect dark. Yeah. Okay, well, if it comes out, I'll, I'll be there. Okay. Um... Yeah, right. So the problem with KI has always been that people really want one. Microsoft owns it, and they're like, "It's like, oh, we could have like a fighting game, like a competitive thing that's not Halo, because Halo's always fucking up." Yeah. And then <laughs> the, the problem has just been that there's never been like a developer, because there's only so many people who can do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And all the people who all originally made that game are like busy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like yeah. they're all doing other they're stuff. They're all doing yeah, their own thing. So it's like, well, who who did, did even if there's someone at Microsoft who really wants to push for it, it's like, what do we do? Yeah, who do we who do we get? So uh, that's it, it, it's at least like 
well, one, it's a nice thing that it's going to have a balance patch, which will hopefully... I find when games get balance patches after, like, a long time, yeah. it tends to be pretty good. You're like, okay, yeah. I can... F- I can I could imagine a couple tweaks to make this like in the perfect spot. And then if that's, it creates a, it could also be like a, like a test for market interest, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Ooh, are people playing KI now? Which they eh, will, it will probably see a surge in In popular. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's all for Evo stuff. As of right now, Mm -hmm. as of 6 50 PM, on, <laughs> on Saturday, August fifth, August fifth, yeah, twenty twenty three. So I think we got to get to the eyeball, eyeball time. All right, here we go. We have a lot of movies. So we watched stuff. a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Uh, I guess the first thing you wanted to talk about was a thing we watched yesterday. That called... I got. She was so you were recommended this by a classmate by, of yours, not a classmate, but like an f- online friend of okay, mine. Okay, online friend. Because they were like, "Hey, you've been watching a lot of the Disney movies recently." I'm like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've been checking out like you know like the big ones like Lion King, yeah. Winnie the Pooh, those kind of stuff. And he, they were like, you, you know, you know a lot about Disney, right? And I, I do. And they're like, you know about those package films. So for those who don't know, during the '40s era of Disney animation, mm-hmm. they didn't really have the budget to do you know like Snow White or Dumbo or yeah. Bambi or Pinocchio. So they were like. Let's just make a bunch of shorts and yeah. call it a movie, and that's what's called a package film. Like, so, I think the modern day we would call it an anthology. An anthology, sure, but the the, the Disney people call it package films. So yeah. there's, I'm a, used to a different kind of package film. You know what I'm talking about? Just a different kind of kind of package on film, dude. You know what I'm talking about? So a handful talking of these. Those, <laughs> talking about those Gex movies. Shut <laughs> up. Sorry. Okay, so yeah, they were they made a bunch of these, and I was recommend. There's like, a, I'm trying to think. Uh, I was trying to think of like ones that people might rec- rec- recognize, but I can't think of any off. The really, the only one I can think of is the Three Caballeros, which is the one that has like Donald going to Brazil and wanting to fuck a bunch of women, live action women. That was the one we watched, right? No, no. Okay, that's different. <laughs> there a is different a different one about Donald going to to. Not Brazil, Mexico? Or just random Latin place? Just a random Latin place, I yeah. guess. Um, there is a Donald segment in the one. With that, real women. <laughs> with real women, yes. They cannot get him away from them. So, <laughs> the, the one that we watched that I was recommended was Melody Time, which came out, I want to say, like, one of the last package films. It felt like it said 48 or something. 48, which was like, yeah, that was like the, the year, two years before they would go back to releasing normal films i think the the first like real film that they went back to doing was cinderella which came out in 50 51 wow is it oh wow okay. yeah so huh. so yeah um this was one of the package films and uh i want to just say publicly to my friend that recommended me this fuck you <laughs> and also thank you because this movie is not really that good it, it it's, would say it's mixed. It's mixed. It just depends on what segments you're talking so about. There's, we'll, we'll go in order of the segments. I should look it up because I might legitimately forget, forget some of yeah. them. We'll talk uh, about all the segments in order. Because... So they did not tell you. They recommend this to you and they did not tell you why. Yeah, they just said go in blind. Also, and I'm like, fine, yeah. I'll, I'll watch it. Because I think it's one of the few. This was one of the few Disney movies. Because I don't. Nobody gives a shit about the package films. Yeah. So I get why I skipped over this one. There's seven? <clears throat> there were seven. I, yeah. Dude. Okay. Okay. Well. Okay. So the first one, the one that it opens with. Let's go in order. Yeah. Once Upon a Winter Time. You remember this one? This was the one with all the cute animals. And, and the, it's in the snow. The and... cishet couple. Yeah. Uh, white couple. Why do you have to say it? Like I, I don't know. Because it's, it's a... You, okay, you know. liberal. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think the I think the <laughs> cable slipped out of the microphone. So did it get uh, everything beforehand? Yeah, no, okay, it was okay. literally just a second ago. Okay, uh, that was what the yeah the the the, the power of yeah whatever I don't know. <laughs> we laughed too hard and we dislodged the yeah. microphone. So this was so this is I thought it was cute. It's very short. It's which a I think very helps it. short segment because yeah, because a bunch of all these are shorts technically. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, it's fine. It's I'm not gonna remember it. It's the song that it, goes with it is kind of cute, but it's like it's mm-hmm. a little couple, and there's like a mirror where there's a couple there's of a, what are they rabbits? Squir- rabbits. They're rabbits, and you can tell the one's a girl because she has lipstick, lipstick. on and, and big eyelashes. It, it, it's like in Tom and Jerry when you could tell like yeah. someone's a sexy cat yeah. because they have they're white and they have lipstick and eyelashes. That's that's <laughs> literally something that happens. <laughs> Are they all white? Are they always a white cat? It's like a gray or a white cat, like something yeah. like a feminine color. No, seriously, I mean that's that's like how it's kind of like you, dude. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I'm kind of a. I'm a white woman. And... <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. The next one was. Oh the... right, right, right. Well, hang on. So one thing I should mention is that all of these, it's called Melody Time mm-hmm. because all of them, it's kind of Fantasia like. It's trying to be in a lot of like ways. a D-tier Fantasia. Was this before or after? This was way after Fantasia. What was the original Fantasia? 41? 40? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is in, in... I think they even say, like, in the Disney tradition. Yeah. Or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they do say so that. So all of these have some sort of... Music. Musical performance. Mm-hmm. To which, accompany which the, is the credit, cartoon. yeah, which is credited. So this one was like Francis Langford, who that name sounds kind of familiar. S- yes, American singer, popular during the golden, golden age. age of the radio. Yeah, so she was like a popular forties, thirties, forties, fifties, yeah, singer. Um, oh, toured with Bob, Bob Hope. Hope. So yeah, so all of these have like some kind of a of a performance, and it's mm-hmm. kind of like set. A lot of them are almost feel like music videos. Essentially, yeah, they're yeah. just like 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 yeah, cartoon music videos. Yeah, especially the second one, mm-hmm. a Bumble Boogie. I love. I, I really like this one. I, I like this one too. One. So Bumble Boogie is the song is courtesy of Freddie Martin and his orchestra, with Jack Fina on piano. It's a swing jazz rendition of Flight of the Bumblebee, which I was at first I was like, uh oh. But then I think it worked. It worked because the animation yeah. pretty much matched up. I, was... I love and when <laughs> like, like an animated short. Mi- That's why I love shit like Looney Tunes uh-huh. because they have they always oh um, they do a lot of musical episodes. a lot of musical episodes yeah. yeah that match with what they're doing on the screen yeah and I lo- this is a prime example of that like the like golden age of animation it was it's really cool and it's short too it's like it's five like two minutes minutes. It yeah, like no, it's maybe three minutes, actually. Two, three minutes, yeah. Uh, it's brief. Honestly, just look it up on YouTube or something, because it's really... It's, it's, it's genuinely great. really cool. Of, if it's, it, of most of the segments, I'd say check this one out. It's highly surreal. Oh, it's, yeah. The it's visuals basically are like, okay, like imagine... Like a pink ish Oh, yeah, something yeah. like that. So imagine Flight of the Bumblebee, but it's like jazz. Mm-hmm. And I was so worried, because obviously Flight of the Bumblebee is like... Like really... Yeah like a thousand notes and it's all like kind of very like marcado mm-hmm. and obviously with swing it's gonna be really well, hard well, a to swing a swing beat is like da, 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 da. it's like the you kind of drag out the first note uh-huh kind of thing and swing and i'm like does that work and i think it actually it, they did well they play around it but it works pretty well and um uh the visuals are kind of just it's just it's just this bee having the worst day ever <laughs> it's just everything's it's this, trying to kill him he's in this like weird just kind of like color void mm-hmm. and then he's trying to like pollinate flowers but the flowers are like the petals are piano keys yeah and and all the notes are just trying to kill all yeah, the notes are trying, trying to, to kill him, him. and the, the it's like he's in a storm which is like yeah. what the, the, the song sounds like mm-hmm. there's like a snake dude you can tell, dude, fuck, I was, excuse me, same thing with when we watched later on, we're going to talk about Wallace and Gromit, uh-huh. but like, I had the same feeling that I got was when we originally watched Wallace and Gromit, mm-hmm. which was like, fuck, this must have been so hard. Yeah. This that's must have that's been... Piano Snake uh-huh. of all the keys. That must have been Every a nightmare. Every single one, like, they, dude, the storyboarding had to be immaculate on that. Yeah. <laughs> like, the fact that you were like, yeah, this one, they didn't have a lot of money. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, I this say that, like and insane. it's like, they clearly have the budget for, like, a short. Yeah. Which like, is insane. It's crazy like, how much work must have been put into, mm-hmm. like, into that. It's really cool. Uh, Next segment. Oh, wait, hang on. Flight of the Bumblebee, are one of many pieces considered for Fantasia. Okay, so I, That's interesting. I, I did see that this this segment was supposed to be in Fantasia, but got cut. 
Oh. And I think this would have been a, a good one to put that in that would have, film. Yeah. This would have been a perfect was, one. Do you think it was animated already? Or was it just they wanted to do this? Maybe song? the idea was pitched and then scrapped and then yeah. picked back up for this one. There was probably someone... That makes me think that there was someone who was like, I really want to do Flight of the Bumblebee Bumblebee, yeah. swing. Yeah. And this was the reason this was so high effort is because mm-hmm. this was someone's passion project. But oh, yeah. And it, it shows. It's really it's, good. It's like probably the sec. Okay, well, I'll talk about yeah. the one that I like the most. Uh, Bumble Boogie is what it's called. Yeah. Third, The Legend of Johnny, Johnny. Appleseed. Oh, you did not like this one. I thought this one sucked ass. I thought it was, it was fine. I thought it was like. It goes on for too long. Yeah. So the problem is, so I realize I have a lot of viewers who are not like U.S. Americans. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> probably don't know what the fuck we're talking about. Or even probably a lot of Americans who don't know what Johnny yeah, Appleseed, Appleseed is. is. I guess to quickly summarize, Johnny Appleseed is a classic American folk tale. Uh huh. And it's about well, it it's very American. It's like in the pioneer days, mm-hmm. and Johnny Appleseed is a is a an unimpressive guy who just picks apples yeah. and he sings is... this song that you recognized. I well, don't... that's like a folk song. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what, what that was. You, you said you knew that song. Yeah, no, I've heard that <clears throat> before. It's fuck. This is 17 minutes. God damn. And it felt like it. <laughs> yeah. It what was the like name it. of the song he was singing? It was like this, uh, like you said it was like a religious song. Da, 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 da. Uh, it's a God, God provides for me. I don't search it up. I guess. Um, I can't remember. Uh, the the Lord is good to me. Yes. Yeah, yes. something like the, that. The Lord is good to me. Yes. I, I think it's just because I went to Catholic school. Oh, yeah this, yeah. this is associated with Johnny Appleseed. Okay. Cool. Um, it's called Johnny Appleseed Grace. Okay. Interesting. Huh. All right. Yeah. Oh, the Lord's been good to So I thank the Lord for... For giving me the things I need, the sun, the rain, and the apple seed. Oh, the Lord's been good to me. There you go. That's how the song went. Yeah. So uh, I knew that. And then... <clears throat> uh, well, this one didn't even have that much music in it. It was kind of it. Uh, There were a few musical numbers and like a few musical segments in it. Yeah. But it's like mostly cartoon. Yeah. It's mostly just a short, which fine, but like... And it's a retelling of Johnny Appleseed, Appleseed which I'm who, like... I know, I know, you do not give a fuck about I this. I don't give a fuck, dude. You saw the title. You're like, oh, it's white people time. It really was. This is our heritage. <laughs> You're it tearing really... down the statue of Johnny Appleseed. <laughs> like, like, it's like the it's like the statue from The Simpsons <laughs> that they keep fucking destroying. So Johnny, well, so Johnny Appleseed is is a very American story. It is because it's like if anyone doesn't know. He's this humble guy during the pioneer days, and he gets told by a guardian angel mm-hmm. to that oh, he can actually he can make a difference. That one person can make a difference if he just works hard, because he loves apples. So he's gonna go out west and he's gonna plant apple trees, and it's like he's gonna do something, and it's gonna grow over the course of his life, and it's gonna provide for other people. It's it's very American. Yeah. Um, and it's just- kind of thing and i mean it's fine it just it, it goes on for a while yeah. and it's your like it there takes was, up most of the screen the were, runtime. oh yeah there was two points where i was like fuck we're still gone yeah <laughs> um uh and then at one point they call it the narrator calls him little johnny appleseed and we started making <laughs> little John. <Lil> john <laughs> yeah, yeah okay Hey Johnny, why don't you go out? Why don't you go out west and plant some apple seeds? Okay, <laughs> okay. He just kind of do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Next segment. Um, the film's second longest piece. What was the first one? I uh, I don't say it. I think I know what it is. It's the last one. I think oh, you're right. It we'll, probably we'll is. get to that probably one. A uh, little toot, which was sung by the Andrews. One of the few people I actually knew. Yes, the Andrews sisters did uh, the song. And uh, I think of all the songs, I'd say. Oh, yeah, baby. This segment is later served as an inspiration for Tugs. I was right, yeah. You called it. So for people who don't know what, what Tugs is, it's like a, <laughs> it's made by the same people that did uh, Thomas and Friends, like the early seasons of Thomas. Mm-hmm. And it's just basically that. It's, but it's with Tugboats. With Tugboats. Yeah. And if, if you've never seen this short, but you've seen Tugs, you will immediately see the, the um, yeah. it's sort of like that Cars type thing where it's like, oh, this vehicle has a face. It has, just has a face. Um. 
This one's pretty cute. I, I actually liked it. Li- I, I liked, liked it. it. I like the tug. I, I, I don't know. I, I like think the... of all the shorts, I'd say, besides the Bumble Boogie, mm-hmm. this one's music fit well with the story. You're right. Yeah. And I think, because I like the Andrew Sisters a lot. They have mm-hmm. great vocals. Uh-huh. And um, hearing their voice blend for like a Disney cartoon is really cool. Uh-huh. And I don't know. It's just really cute. I don't really have much to say about this one other than it's, I like, it's cute. Well, I like the, I think the naval theme was cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. It just it t- so it's about a little uh, tugboat called Little Toot, and he's a dude. What the he's, fuck? Is, what is his problem? He's a little scam. He's a piece of shit. He's a shithead. <laughs> he's this little piece of shit tugboat who like spits soot into like ship windows. <laughs> he causes terrorism. He ca- he's like a yeah. He, he causes he, like a like a ship to crash into New York. Yeah, like pro, like. He's, he does 910. 910. <laughs> a, se- a second cruise liner has hit the towers. <laughs> uh, and then he, uh, then he, oh, he's an outcast because he's such a piece of shit. No one likes him. Mm-hmm. But then he he goes so far out because he's so sad that uh-huh. he finds a ship that's in trouble in a storm. And he brings it all the way back to the harbor and he becomes a hero. Uh-huh. And it's, it's, oh, it's cute. It's just long enough. It's like five minutes, I yeah. think. It's just, it's not like the Johnny Appleseed one where it's like, you could have ended this like five minutes ago. Yeah. This one goes for just right the right amount of time. Just long enough. Yeah. And then I like the colors. Oh, yeah. I like the setting. It's just in, very, like, the harbor. it's very stylized. Yeah. I, I liked, I don't know. I like, I'm trying to think of what it what it reminds me of, but it's just like, well, the characters are all just like these anthropomorphic isn't the right word but like personified personified boats vehicles. and stuff and there's no humans you never see a person yeah and you'd never I, yeah you never I do. don't know it kind of reminds me of like children's books yeah it reminds you like thomas that it's just yeah that it, well in thomas there's people oh, there's people there i'm just yeah. thinking like children's books where it's like well there's just like i don't know there's just vehicles there's just vehicles and it's yeah. it's like because it's about boats that's what it is it's about yeah. boats <laughs> um yeah i like that one trees this one felt the most like it shouldn't it have belonged different. there. It was very different. It feels it feels like, this, a, this, like this, a variety. This thing. felt like their night of bald on Bald Mountain segment. A little bit, yeah. Like they're like yeah, like they're a serious one, I guess. So this one is based off of. I think it has an interesting. There's an interesting kind of like idea that they tap into. They they kind of mention. During it, there's like a weird narrator who like tells you like this one's about this before yeah, everything for everything yeah. But uh, so it's originally it, it roots it roots back to um, <laughs> the poem "Trees" from 1913 by Joyce Kilmer, which was then turned into a song uh, by a man named Oscar Rosbach, and uh, in this. Short is performed by Fred Waring and the Pennsylvanians, which is a wonderful nineteen forties name. That is such a like Dude, a nineteen forties. No one band names name. their th- people the Pennsylvanians, <laughs> something like that. Uh, and now it's an animation based off of the this poem, the, off of the song, which is based off the poem. Well, it's an adaptation of the poem. Yeah. So there's, I don't know, there's an interesting story. I like the it. idea that, and they sort of, I don't know. Well, it's funny because the poem is about how the tree kind of persists. Throughout, the, throughout time, the throughout time, the seasons. Yeah, the seasons. And it changes with the seasons. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like, oh, well, like the method, the, the form, the medium of the original poem is also growing and changing yeah. over time, which I thought was neat. That's neat. Um, it's very short. It's like two minutes. Yeah, it's the shortest segment of all of them. Yeah. It goes by like immediately. I really liked, I like the colors. It's very dark. I think of all the animation, the like segments, like just the way every the segment looked, I think it was the best yeah. one. It was so It's very dark and painterly. Yeah, it's like the, a the animals are more realistic. Yeah, it's like a Bambi type thing where the animals <laughs> yeah. are really realistic and it's it's be- it's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's really it's really, really nice. Good. Um, an extended break between the sixth and seventh line. Da, da, da. Uh, so to preserve the look of the original story sketches, layout artist Ken O'Connor came up with the idea of using frosted cells and rendering the pastel images right onto the cell. Interesting. That's kind of cool. The result was a look that had never been seen in animation before. Oh, okay. I actually didn't know that. So they, That's, that's kind of neat. They were laminated... And then frosted, and then rendered. Uh, okay, yeah, cool. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, no, I like this one. Yeah, that's it's, a pretty it's, good one. It's cool. It's a solid and it, one. It has a nice. I don't know. It's it's like very. I don't know. How do I describe it? 
it's like a I don't know, like a living painting, I guess. Yeah, very very beautiful. It's a very, like legitimately it's, really. It's really a really beautiful, beautiful uh, segment. Um, and only God can make the tree. That I like that. Yeah, that, I like the last two lines, or it's, it's like. I forget exactly what it is, but it's like I ma- I wrote this poem about the tree, but only God can make, make the trees. The trees. Like, that's it cool. feels very uh, a style of poetry that's of I don't know nineteen thirteen. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it feels of, like of we're gonna time. write about nature and and our relationship to it mm-hmm. and how we're different. And I, I liked it. That's cute. Blame it on the samba, <laughs> dude. Blame it on the rain. Blame it on King Koopa. <laughs> 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 I, I was not expecting you to reference that. <laughs> Sorry, I, I meant uh, Blame on King Koopa. Remember? Because they censored it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. They, in the like in, like in the Bob Mario cartoon. They do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to explain that reference because I don't. I if don't you know, like you it. know. Um, yeah, dude. If you know, you know. You your know. references to the '90s Super Mario Mar- Brothers cartoon. cartoon. <laughs> Uh, blame it on the samba. This one's fine. Uh, I like the music to this one. I'll say that. Yeah, that's true. The music, the song itself is like really catchy. I, I can find myself listening yeah. to this again. So this was the 1914 polka. Oh, f- I'm going to fuck this up. Apanete Cavaquino by Ernesto Nazareth. Fitted with English lyrics. Okay. Um, the Dinning Sisters provide vocals while organist Ethel Smith appears in a live action, action role. role. So yeah, um, this short stars Donald Duck and uh, Jose Carioca, who I like very much. Was he in old shorts or something? He was actually, speaking of Three Caballeros, he's one of the Three Caballeros. And he's also in another oh. another um, Saludos Amigos, which was before the Three Caballeros. Interesting. He's like, he's sort of the... <laughs> Like his guide, like because Donald is in one of the shorts in Saludos Amigos, where he sort of takes Donald like a tour of like Brazil. Okay, he quite literally takes Donald to Brazil. No, no, <laughs> and um, he's a really cool character. I, 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 I like. Oh, yeah. I, I kind of wish they bring him back. He's a really nice. He's a really nice character. I find it interesting because especially in recent years, Disney's don't... been like the the most... doing a lot of a lot of bunch of Mexican stuff. There is a Three Caballeros is... show. That like appeared hmm. around the time that like the Ducktales reboot was being. Really, made. it was really like push. It was like one of those shows that's like pushed back. It like you like Disney's trying to bury it. Oh, weird. it's one of those huh. shows. Yeah, um, you don't really see a lot of Jose Carioca. Like the most I've seen him in recent is like a Nendoroid, and that's it. <laughs> what the fuck? They hit, apparently. It's a weird thing. To I like know. A Nendoroid. <laughs> um. Yeah. So it's just them walk. They're like all depressed. And they're being. I think it's like they're sad. They're all and sad. They're, they're all. They're, they're all blue. They're, they're tired. They're tired. Um, and then this a character named the Arukan bird, who's not Woody Woodpecker. Araquan. The Araquan. They say they they pronounce they it the Arukan bird. Arukan. It's A R A C U A N. Arukan bird. Something like that. He's like this really cute, like Woody Woodpecker esque character. Right. Um, and he just gives him energy in tune He's to the like, song let me play you the samba yeah so this yeah. the song is about like the invigorating power of, of samba, samba music yeah and so then oh it perks them up and they do a little dance, dance. and they jump into a drink and there's like a, women in there <laughs> there's a woman in there's there a, yeah. there's a whole ass woman in there <laughs> yeah and they're just interacting with the um the the, the, the live action person there and right. it, it looks cool i mean yeah. it's not roger rabbit but it looks no. it looks really good for its time yeah, she's like playing it, and they're like, "Oh, I'm gonna put a stick of dynamite." dynamite. I'm gonna piano. blow the shit out of this woman. <laughs> and then she's just completely unfazed. <laughs> yeah, she's just sitting there, just playing the piano. Uh, uh, this, yeah, I like the segment. It's, it's fine. cute. Yeah, wasn't my favorite, but uh, it's all right. And then finally, <laughs> the big one. This might the... have been why your friend recommended this. I'm pretty sure, like after thinking about it, I'm pretty sure this is why they recommended me this film. So this is Pecos Bill. Yep. Uh, apparently an actual like folk yeah, legend. Yeah, this is an actual folk legend. I've I actually knew about this. this person beforehand. Okay. So Pecos Bill is a... Well, you talk about it because you know about Pecos Bill. Yeah, so... Well, first of all, so it opens and I see cowboys and I said... Oh, I'm like, oh, I'm hell, like... Oh my God. Let me, let me... <laughs> oh, it's her time. This okay. is a uh, American, like a uh, like Western folklore thing. Well, Southern, right? Southern folklore. It's in Texas. It's in Texas, yeah. In Texas. 
So they open up, and it's like this, uh, I don't know. Who the Group fuck. of live-action actors. Yes, they, they cut to a bunch of live-action actors I didn't expect. Yeah. <laughs> and they're, they're talking around. They're like, why do you think the, the, the coyotes howl at the moon every night? And it's because the, of... The daughter asks. The daughter asks, the daughter asks yeah. this, and, the, and I guess the he, dad or something. It's about Pecos Bill. It's about Pecos Bill, and I'm... <laughs> and and his his horse uh, was the Overwatch Widow character. Maker. His horse, <laughs> his horse Winston. Winston, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and his, and <laughs> there's this line uh, that they they also introduced this character called uh, Slewfoot Sue. Slewfoot Sue. And and the and the, the little son goes like, oh, there's girls in this, this story. <laughs> That's gay. It sounds like Ben Shapiro talking about Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> Literally the most the most woke. <laughs> there's women in the story there's women in the air oh. get that get that guys back on screen yeah um and then they they transition to the, to the actual then story. the actual animation which is the which legend is, of pecos bill which i'd say yep this is the best segment of all of them yeah i don't know if it's exactly my favorite but i'd say it's my favorite I, this is a really good one this is a really good one to with at least like, with like one thing with like <laughs> one little <laughs> one there's little, one one little one little one little one little racist in here. Oh yes. Okay, so I don't for people who own Disney Plus, a bunch of movies <laughs> from that time, like mm-hmm. Dumbo, Jungle Book, um, Pinocchio, I think had that disclaimer. It has a disclaimer that says like Yeah, this shit's racist. They're like there's something hey, there's stuff in here. There's that stuff might in not here that be might politically correct, correct in modern times, yeah. but we're gonna keep it in. It's not it's not like Song of the South where we just straight up can't release this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like we can still release this but like just know that there's a scene that we we, we regret this yeah we like, regret like, this hey heads up dude um yeah there's so, a scene like you most it. of this movie so Pe- the so, so the idea with the pecos bill legend is that he is this legendary cowboy who was raised by wolves mm-hmm. or sorry coyotes coyotes, coyotes. <laughs> coyotes. <laughs> Uh, and then he becomes a friend of the animals and, and he's bigger, he's faster than, he's faster than them, he's stronger than them. He's like this superhuman kind of character. They, they straight up say he's like a Western Superman. Right. They yeah. say that in the song. Yeah. Um, and so there's all these features of the Texas landscape mm-hmm. or the South, Southern, Southwestern US. How he brought US. water to the to yeah. Texas. And, and, he's... and I like that the map is like mostly oh, yeah, Texas. Right. The whole, the, they show a map of the US and it's like. It's like seventy percent Texas, and then all the other states are just cramped They're in the like corner. Smaller, yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> um, so it's like, oh, it, it's it's he his superhuman whatever is he he for like oh he uh, uh he was dr- thirsty in the desert, so he dug the what river is it the is it the Rio Grande? I think it's the Rio Grande. I might be wrong, but and I think then, it is. Yeah, and then he uh, what's what's the other stuff he does? Uh oh man, what does he do? <laughs> I'm forgetting now. I man, only remember that. And then the you love Pepco Spill. What did he do? Uh, he brought ooh, water. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> so it's, it's, he's doing a bunch of he's, stuff he's like that. He's essentially just like the Western Superman. That's yeah. essentially what he is. But he's making all these like features of the Texas landscape. Yeah. And, and cultural stuff and and uh, oh he then, uh he beats up a bunch of people and there's gold. <laughs> yes. So he beats. So there's yeah there's like all these guys cattle who, rustlers cattle rustlers and then he they have these gold teeth uh-huh. and he beats them up and all their teeth gold teeth pop out mm-hmm. and that's why there's gold in the hills Just funny. and stuff like okay cute uh-huh. and then they're like hey you know the the painted what are the painted mountains the painted mountains painted, canyons painted mountains can, painted yeah can, the canyons. one of one one of the other one of those. Uh, how'd they get their colors? Wouldn't that be fun if there was a way that, you know, he caused these beautiful multicolored uh, rocks and which I'm, I'm pretty sure it was just like, like that was, that was actually just like geog- 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 geography, geography, tectonic activity, whatever. Yeah. Um, and the way that he did it is that, uh, no, actually there's a bunch of Indians <laughs> Slapping Slash, each other with paint. Slashing. A, they're yeah. like playing Splatoon with each other. Yeah, they're they're having a Splatoon sesh, <laughs> and then he's like, "Hold up, native peoples." <laughs> Dude, the <laughs> audio levels shooting. got completely fucked right there. Yeah. Uh, he just he, starts shooting the shit out of them. He just starts like, shooting at they're them. They're not doing anything. And he's like, "Hold up, <laughs> minorities having fun." <laughs> Bow, 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 it Spill honestly time. makes that 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 segment from Peter Pan look like nothing. 
thankfully it's like five seconds it, it, it it's it comes like it's goes. so weird it's just there and then it's gone it's like ooh, this feels a little little old-fashioned you know yeah in a way that uh <laughs> i think they honestly probably could have edited that out for the disney plus version which i'm yeah. sure it's, i'm kind of glad they didn't because i just it's it's just funny yeah just to see because in I, I i do know this in mm-hmm. uh vhs dvd releases of this movie they edit out him smoking right that smokes that's like it's like that et gun thing where they just digitally take it out <laughs> they're holding like just nothing yeah they've got nothing yeah <laughs> um right yeah so it's well you know it's from the 40s so it's like everyone smokes yeah everyone smokes everyone smokes they showed adlan for it on tv yeah yeah they do um cartoon characters uh drink and smoke and shit have like you seen like old ads for the flintstones yeah no i think you showed me yeah those. yeah uh so it's it's like it's overall like a really charming fun oh it's segment a, it's a beautiful it's segment. Really, it's really well really animated it, there's, yeah there's a lot of funny bits in uh-huh. there and there's just like this one weird like racist 10 second bit yeah it's like, like it's that's like, a little fucking odd you could have taken that out <laughs> I w- I'm glad they didn't. I because just just, for, just, like, just like no, just like let it be. In just there. let it be. Yeah, I'd rather it was in there, honestly, because I personally love racism. <laughs> and <laughs> you laugh at that shit, like <laughs> like, like like Mike's the closet laughs at old people. It's my. I don't know. It's just, it's just, you know. I just look at them run. Anyway, so the then so is Slewfoot Sue not part of the original legend? No, she is. Oh, okay, she, she is. is. So he falls in love. With a lady, a, a lady on a on a catfish. She's oh my god, a catfish. Oh, that's, ah. that's what you want. That's what you want, right? <laughs> Hold up, white girl riding a catfish. catfish? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, she rolls into the into the Texas River, wild whatever the fuck. And then he's like, apparently the first woman he's ever seen. Yeah, they say it. He's it's like, like, I was just fucking dudes before this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was like. He was like, uh, who, who's that? Um, the monk? No, no, no. I've been in the hills fucking dudes. dudes. Yeah, yeah, he was like that. Yeah, he. Was, I was just playing Gex this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> and she goes, and he's like, oh, boy, boy how do I, I need to court that lass? I don't, I don't know. That's what they would say. Yeah, though. that's what they would say. And it's, you got yeah, it. Yeah, thanks. And, and his they, horse is just And like, it just kind of happens. Yeah. And his horse, but his horse tries to sabotage it. He's a little scamp. He's Yay. a little scoundrel. It's all like the Lion King. It is like the Lion it King. It is legitimately <laughs> like, no, but now we're not going to, I don't know, have adventures or something. You'll so, still be there. Yeah. So here's the problem is that, you know, we live, is that in that time, there were no BBLs. So, okay. So Slewfoot Sue, if she wanted a large rumpus. She needed that bustle. Yep. Which is a word that you knew that I did not know. But bustle is like a, a, like a fashion a thing. A bustle yeah. was a thing a lady would put under her skirt. To and have then a it, huge To ass. make it look like her ass was bigger. And it's literally just like a frame, like a cage. Yeah, it is. Like it's like a, you, a frame cage. Yeah. Uh, like, like a... Why like am I thinking like a bumblebee for some reason? <laughs> I was going to say like, like a Victorian woman's dress almost. Yeah, well, not not like poofing out in all directions. Not just like, yeah, just the rear. Just end. the ass. You just put it up. You just, it's just behind <laughs> you, and then it uh, it makes you look like you got a, a big old rumpus. Big old yeah, big old armica on you. Yeah, <laughs> dude, when's that guy gonna make a video on uh, Slufut Sue? Who the the what the fuck is his name? Peach guy. Peach's ass or something. Peach's ass. <laughs> we found this guy on YouTube. I was trying to show Cat an example of Cammy's ass physics from Street Fighter Six, and apparently it was uploaded by a dude who's like the ass master of YouTube. And yeah. He, makes, he does these like these like video game butt reviews. It's like where, video game butt reviews, but if you look, but at it's it, like personal history with this with the ass or something. Yeah, and like if you look down enough, like his most viewed video is like him dancing to like a fucking like rap song. Yeah, he's like <laughs> so weird. He's just he's it's awesome. Like, he does he does dances and he also analyzes ass. I'm like, yeah, you know what? That's and it's good literally for you. And he made like this thing like the history like his favorite is Princess Peach. Oh yeah, and he's doing a thing about like how he loves Peach's butt, and he's like. Talking this whole story about how he would played Peach in Smash Brothers and how he went to like a local tournament and he's like, yeah, so I ended up uh, 
winning the tournament with Pija and her fat ass, of course. <laughs> it's just like he's so, yeah, yeah. He's so wonderfully casual about it. I, I love him. Yeah. He just he knows what he he talks about. He's just talking shop. Oh yeah. About 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 derriere. Uh yeah, and then uh, the slew foot sue on the day of their wedding. Uh huh. The horse makes her like bounce on the bustle and then she launches super high yeah and she keeps launching higher and higher and higher and <laughs> so no one she can gets stop it till she gets, reaches the moon yeah and yeah grew you thought you were the first one no yeah. wallace and grandma you thought you were yeah, the first no, ones no dude, she... imagine buzz aldrin like <laughs> what the hell what what the hell there's a white lady up here <laughs> they got white women up here <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the Mexican space program starts building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they got white women up there. It's like, have you have you ever played that uh, that that one rabbits game, the Raving Rabbits? No. There's a game um, called Rabbits Go Home. Are they from the moon? No, 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 no. It's like they they want to go up there because why not? So they they build like a bunch like because they live in a fucking like trash like yeah yeah like trash site yeah. So, so the whole game is that you collect shit. They live in Detroit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where you just co- you collect shit. It's like Katamari almost. Oh, weird. Huh. Not like, like yeah, kind of actually. Like okay. you just collect items, and you just they they want to make like this big pile to go up to the moon. It's called. <laughs> I know in Japan there's a connection between rabbits and the moon. I think so. Yeah, actually. <laughs> I know all those rabbit bitches from Toho is from the moon. Oh, yeah. maybe something like that. That Tui. But Ubisoft is not from Japan, which is weird. Maybe they were trying to appeal to the Japanese market with their Raving Rabbits game. Well, you know, Japan, they love silent characters, babbling. Like, they love, they love the they minions. They love the minions. They love Chon the Sheep. That's what I was telling you about. Yeah, you were like, telling me. you got to make a If you want international appeal, you got to make something that's, like, generally appealing. Uh-huh. And doesn't really talk. The serve bots could also count for that, too. Oh, I love the serve bots. Yeah. I do too. Yeah, because they don't say anything. They don't. They just make food <laughs> and serve a and serve a beautiful lady. Yeah, Tron. Is it? Do you, Tron, do you pronounce it Tron Bon or Tron Bone? Tron Bon. Okay, that's what I because it should I think rhyme, right? Yeah. You can hang on. Let me look it up because I've heard people call her a bone because it's B O N. I've heard say people. I've heard people say both. Let's look up the Japanese because it won't lie. Uh, no, it doesn't. It, it, it won't. No, it's literally... Oh, wait. Yeah, on. it's right there. Tron Bon. No, Tron Bon. Tron Bon. Tron Bon is how you would pronounce that. It's kind of close. Yeah, you could, you could actually go either way. You could go either way, I guess. Yeah. Well, because the, the... The problem is Japanese doesn't have an ah. Uh. True. Or no, they would, but it would be spelled with an... It would be, it would, it would, it would be spelled like with an A. Nah... Uh. So I the problem is that in Japanese, if you want to say Tronbon, and if you're translating that into English, you would you have to you would you would probably use an O. Uh huh. But if you were to write it in Japanese, it would translate literally with an A. Uh, so A. Uh, Japanese only has five vowel sounds. Uh huh. It's A I U E O. So this is their vowels, I guess. Yes, that's what I said. Okay, yes. they have five Sorry. vowel sounds. Sorry, <laughs> unlike in English, where we can like say them a bunch of different ways. Uh-huh. So, yeah, I guess it actually could go either way. She's fourteen. There's no way. Yeah, she is. And she doesn't look like it. I know. Damn. Well, not in the things that I read. Anyway. <laughs> okay, babe. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, why she got the cod piece on? She does. Oh my god. What's she protecting down there? Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Uh, melody time. Overall thoughts. Well, you okay? So your favorite was was I okay? If I had to rank them from worst to be, oh, best to worst, yeah. I'd say Pecos Bill is the best. Mm-hmm. Pull up the list again because I'm gonna forget. Yeah, I'd say Pecos Bill is the best. I'd say Bumble Boogie's right under. Mm-hmm. I'd put Blame It on the Samba under. Mm-hmm. Actually, no, I'd put Little Toot as third, and then Blame It on the Samba because mm-hmm. what does that leave us with? Legend Johnny Appleseed. Once upon a winter time. Oh, the trees Little one. Two, trees. Uh, okay, I'd put blame on the samba, and then the trees, and then. Fuck! What am I missing? <laughs> well, two, winter time. What is it? Just winter one, time. Once upon a winter time. Okay, then once upon a winter time, and then Johnny Appleseed is the worst one. Okay. I'd say. Okay, I would say put it more into just the ones that I liked, which would have been Pecos Bill, especially the racist parts. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, trees, I really liked. I liked a little toot. 
and Bumble Boogie. Once upon a winter time, uh, blame it on the Samba were a little kind of boring, but not to me, but pretty inoffensive. And then Johnny Appleseed is way too goddamn long. Yeah, they should have cut that <laughs> way. If it was really truncated, I, I think it would have been yeah, a lot it better. Yeah, would have been better if it was just shorter. No, we're gonna get we're gonna get the whole legend. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, okay, so yeah. that was melody time. I'm sure you guys were really invested in our ranking of the short seven shorts from a movie that no one's ever heard of from 1948. This I hope that we have like the most popular review of yeah. melody time fuck you doug walker and your disney summer we have the better review of melody time i hope i hope animat has one no he doesn't i don't think he, he does. seems like he would and he would talk he for might a long have time but about it. but maybe and he would because he has like that animat's classic reviews where he talks about like yeah. older stuff but i don't think that that's ever popped and he would up. go the legend of johnny appleseed <laughs> while animated beautifully takes a little too long <laughs> that's my that's my impression of him. i love animat <laughs> me too <laughs> If you're ever watching anime, we love you. Yeah, I love you. I know he watches this podcast. We're pen pals, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Wallace and Gromit, A Matter matter of of Loaf and and Death. Death. Great name. Yeah, it is a good name. So this was a Wallace and Gromit short that was released, when, 2018, did you say? 2008. Oh, 2008. Okay. Yeah. Um, And we missed it in our initial watch through. I think we just forgot about it. I, I trusted you. I thought I we, trusted you. I thought we watched everything. You didn't wa- tell me Letty was alive. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we watched all Wallace and Gromit shorts and movie, but I guess because you were wrong. Because you were fucking wrong. Hey, we have time before the movie comes out. The next yeah. one in 2024. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Matter of Loaf and Death, was the most recent one, right? Yep, this is the yeah. most recent Wallace and Gromit related thing. Oh, there were Telltale games that came out after well, this. <laughs> but, yeah, you mean like a short a or a short, movie or something? Yeah, this is the most recent short. So this, well, I like this a lot. It's about as delightful as every other Wallace and Gromit. There's no, there's no bad Wallace and Gromit yeah. shorter movie. I'd say of the four, this is my least favorite. But I still think it's really good. Yeah. Least favorite is not even an insult. That's really not the even. The only a... thing with it is... That I could hold against it is that it's basically a retread of the wrong trousers. The wrong trousers, which is the whole plot line is Wallace l- doesn't know that this person has malicious intent, but Gromit does. Gromit's trying to tell him, but Gromit's a little dog and he doesn't know how to talk English. So how does Gromit do? Oh, he does. not Oh, something goes. Ah. And then the climax. Yep. So it's basically the same plot line, mm-hmm. and I a mean a little bit. I'd say a little bit of that third short with Sean the Sheep, because he's because like oh Wallace falls in love with someone in that short. Oh, I feel like that's just something right. that just keeps happening. Yeah, yeah, Wallace that, is just slutty, dude. He is. Wallace he falls is, in Wallace love. Wallace got no standards with that fucking yarn girl in that one yeah. short. He falls in love with, and then the, she's um, also evil in that one too. Isn't well, she? kind of. It's the dog. It's the dog. It's the robot right, it's dog. The dog. It's the robot dog. Yeah. Oh, God, it was the robot dog. And in the and the of course the were rabbit. He falls in love with Hel- Helena Bonham Carter's character. <laughs> right, that is her. <laughs> um, carrot, carrot head, carrot top. She's yeah, a carrot, carrot top. top. <laughs> um, here she falls in love with a um someone. I guess. So she was she was the mascot for, for a bread company. A bread company that was like a. Baker light, which ba- I they call her the Baker light, some kind of like to, to brings to me mind some kind of like low low fat bread alternative yeah, or something like she's that. She's like this like Lady Godiva ish woman. Yeah, and so her whole deal was that she they, their mascot was her because she's like it was like a uh, not umbrella hot air balloon hot air balloon yeah 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 <laughs> hot air balloon and she would ride in the hot air balloon and she was their mascot and then she got. She got. She ate too much bread. Yeah, that's she like ate too much bread. When the, when they when they revealed that that's why she wanted to kill people, I thought that was fucking hilarious. She felt she was I'm she, like that's that's your fault. She she oh I ate too much bread. bread. Oh too much ciabatta. Did you not hear what Ramona Flowers said? <laughs> yeah, dude, haven't you wa- haven't you watched the two thousand and four? Cl- Is it two thousand? When the Scott when Pelham the comic the, comes no, came out? No, the, the movie. The movie came out twenty ten. 2010 really can yeah. you watch the 2000 oh wait this is that's would have been after this yeah this would have been after but never the, mind haven't you read the 2004 comic scott pilgrim versus the world 
Baker Light bitch. <laughs> um, so she's, she has a vendetta against bakers and bread. Yeah. And in this one, they're, I realized really with this one is that Wallace and Gromit are kind of like the Three Stooges. Where every you, every short they're doing something they're, different. They're doing something different. They're never they've never have a steady occupation or something. So uh-huh. here they are randomly bakers, and it's still in their house, but their hell house is just outfitted with all this. They have like a windmill now, which was not yeah, in the last the short. Windmill and and uh, uh, all these Rube Goldberg machines to get bread baked. Yeah, it's like Pee Wee's um, like like breakfast machine. Kind yeah, of. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's the same idea. So, uh, man, there's a lot of movies with Rube Goldberg breakfast machines. Is it Shitty just... Shitty Bang Bang? Oh has yeah, Shitty Shitty Bang Bang has one. Um, Walls and Gromit's got one. Pewis has got one. There's probably a bunch of others. Hey, leave a comment below your favorite Rube Goldberg the breakfast, breakfast machine, machine. <laughs> from a movie or a book. Family or... Guy has one, like a cutaway, but I don't know if that counts. It's like a reference. It's so true. I don't know. It's not... Whatever. Um, and then he, they stumble into this lady and her little, her little emo poodle, who's like terrified the entire. Who's all scared and shaking. I Every just to second pick her she's up. on screen, she's shaking, and I feel bad. I just, just want to scoop her up and yeah, yeah. I'm like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> what's you, wrong with you? You okay? <laughs> just fucking grabbing a dog. Are you okay? You okay? It's it's like Penn and Teller. I love you, dog. I don't, I don't know. You've never seen that clip? No, I've never seen that clip. There's a meme out there. I'm sure people have seen that clip. It's a, I'll show it to you after. Okay, fine, fine. I will, right I will. Uh, and then she gets the clothes and then, oh, wait, is there something fishy going on? And then Gromit finds a thing and then, oh, whoopsie doopsie. And then Wallace and Gromit hijinks happen. Yeah. It's delightful. Really it's, not much to say about it. The it's, reason there's not much to say is that it's very similar to the to, other trousers. Yeah. So it's like... Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very vomit. similar plot structure, mm-hmm. but it's very delightful. If they did it a third time, I'd be like, all right, guys, you got to cut Wallace off. Yeah. Um, As I think this is the last short that Peter Salas voices Wallace. Did he die? He passed away in 2017, 2016. Oh, damn. Yeah. So there, there's a new voice actor. He sounds pretty good. I couldn't even tell. No, 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 no. There's a new voice actor for oh, act no. now. What? He does like Who's commercials. The... Oh, com- okay. That's probably why. I, yeah, I don't know. and like games. So that's why you, you. Okay. If you heard his voice, you'd be like, "Oh, that's a pretty good." It's like it's like um, Casey Kasem or, or like Matthew Lillard taking over for Shaggy. It's like, wow, that's a pretty good. Oh yeah, okay. It's a, it's a pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I would hope, Jesus, for yeah. a character like Wallace. Yeah, it sounds kind of funny to say, but he's like he's he's an iconic character. Yeah, he is. Like he's... you don't want to fuck his voice up. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's great. Go watch it. Mm-hmm. It's it's Wallace and I almost said Penn and Teller. <laughs> Wallace and Gromit, Penn and Teller, Hollow Notes. <laughs> uh, Beavis the, and Butthead. Beavis and Butt. Coed and Cambria. Zach and Cody. Zach and Cody. <laughs> Drake and Josh. Drake and Josh. <laughs> uh, no, who's that guy? Those people. I, Simon and Garfunkel. Simon and Garfunkel. I always confuse Simon and Garfunkel with Hall and Oates. Yeah, you told and me. And then I'm like, no, nah, the Hall and Oates, that's, that's those two broads. <laughs> Simon and Garfunkel are the musicians. Yeah, they're musicians. Yeah, the musicians. <laughs> so now I guess we, we go into the final... So we have two Nickelodeon two movies things for the yes. price of one. Yeah. So last week we watched Jimmy Neutron, Neutron Boy, Boy Penis. Boy Gina. Okay. We went in different directions <laughs> for that, but okay. Uh, and, uh, okay. So you and I are, we both, maybe we grew up when the we, TV we, show was we on. We both grew up with around this time. I always, I really liked the the Jimmy Neutron TV series. I love the, the I Jimmy Neutron yeah, show. I liked it a lot. I, it's very, it's so very, it's fun. it's fun, and it's it, it's very much like like what we said about Barnyard in that it's a show that doesn't take itself way too seriously. In fact, it's it's, it's pretty goofy. fucking insane. Yeah, they have you seen some of those episodes? I told you yeah, about the I, one with the pizza. Yeah, with where the yeah the, the sleep yeah. where the pizza is like this fucking like doom creature it it looks creepy yeah. there's this one episode i watched re- re- recently that's really fucked up what is it there's an episode where jimmy wants a brother 
I'm like, okay. So he builds himself Uh-oh. a robot brother. Oh, you Okay, like, no, 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 no. Whoa. Don't expect some Rick and Morty type shit. <laughs> Okay. He builds a, a, a brother, but yeah. the brother ends up being more popular than him in school. Okay. And he's like, okay, I went way too far. So he tries to, like, murder the brother. What like the try, fuck? Trying to deactivate his... And, and it's like... It's like it's like this, like, her type thing where it's like the robot grows sentient. Where he's like, please don't do it. What he's the like, fuck? It's really fucked up. And it's, he just smashes his head in with the butt of a rifle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just like weird stuff like that and like the episode carl gets pregnant you showed me a clip of yeah, that yeah carl gets pregnant what i'm boy preggers yeah do i have to go to the boy to colleges to get a, a boy abortion <laughs> many such cases and this movie is pretty much it's a it's so a, it's very similar to Barnyard also in that it works a lot better as a TV a show, series yeah. than a movie. It's weird. It almost feels like the movies for both of those was like someone had the idea for the show first. Yeah. I don't know if that's how I, it happened. I think but... I think that is actually it because I think I read somewhere that uh, Steve Odekirk or whatever, Johnny mm-hmm. Davis had the idea for like they wanted to make a, a CG TV show, which was unheard of at the time. This is Jimmy Neutron. Uh, we're huh. talking about yeah okay, yeah yeah, yeah. Um, because really the only one you'd have is reboot that is the only yeah. one and it, that looks like shit yeah reboot looks like ass and if you like it you should <laughs> you should knock it off dude it's embarrassing it is kind of a not, not okay. a good show I've but heard, yeah I know I've heard apparently it's good it just, it I just, don't know it just looks like I've only seen one episode it, uh, apparently it's good I don't know I don't know oh wait Beast Wars oh Beast Wars yes both are by the same company is it yes didn't know that. So, the, uh, okay, I'm going to sidetrack. Let, let's talk about CG animation and television. These the Donkey two, Kong show. That's a different studio. That's Novana. But was actually. that before Jimmy Neutron? That had to have been, right? That's before Jimmy Neutron. Yeah. Was. Okay. Um, there's the, the studio. Um, <laughs> there, there's these two guys that, that did computer animation uh-huh. specifically for... The, you. I don't know if you've seen this music video, but for money... Money for, for nothing, nothing I've heard it, about this. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, th- these guys were just like... They were basically just like, oh, what did they do? What did they most know from? That was... Yeah. The that money was, for nothing music video. That was their creep. Yeah, <laughs> that was their creep. And they wanted to branch out to other stuff in uh, television animation. They were like one of the first people to ever do CG animation for yeah. television. And I think there's an episode of Reboot where they straight up kill off yes, those characters. I've heard of that. I which is funny that. as hell. The some money for nothing guys show, the characters from that show up and they No, it's like a talent show or something. Yeah, yeah. And they perform a bit of the song or something like it's that. Like, it's like it's like a MIDI. Yeah. And they're like, dude, you fucking suck ass. And it's just it's And they just straight like, up murder it's them. Creative self harm. Yeah. <laughs> and um that studio went on to make stuff. I wonder They where... they made like they made like the Barbie Direct to DVD uh, stuff. Oh, interesting. They Did made like the Ratchet and Clank movie. Oh, well, way later. Way later, yeah. Was that? That's, I believe, Rainmaker. That's the name of their studio. Right. Do you think that they have any connection to um, Run and fu- to Run and Gun? No, no, that's a separate thing. Okay, because I'm thinking of, like early, early CG. Yeah, that's like, not stuff. Yeah, run and so gun around this time. Yeah. This I think the animator's name Johnny Davis pitched this thing to Steve Odekirk, his uh, O Entertainment. Yeah, his O O O O. You've seen that logo before. Yeah, the O thing. Oh. Um, pitched this thing to uh, Steve Odekirk. He's like, this would because I think he initially wanted. John, uh, well, originally his name was Johnny Quasar. You've seen that before. Yeah, that was like it was a like a little five second thing. Or a something. little five second yeah. uh, animation they showed at um, Sidgraph. You know what Sidgraph is, right? It's like a convention where they show off like little three oh, no, D animation. I didn't know that. That's like that's where a lot of uh, CG animators at the time got their big. That's where Pixar got their start. Oh, okay. A lot of they showed a lot of their um, older shorts there. That's where uh, like Luzzo Junior or Tin Toy got their debut. Yeah, they you showed off about that. Yeah, um, around this time, yeah, that he wanted to make a short, uh, initially like a short or like a TV show, mm-hmm. but I think Steve Odekirk was like, "I want let's make a movie first to okay. see if this like would... a one shot, almost a like one... a pilot." That's yeah, this is weird, but yeah, yeah, one shot, essentially a one like shot a proof pilot, of, proof of concept. Almost. Yeah, yeah, to see if like this idea would uh, resonate. 
which let's be honest it would it would have even yeah, if not a weird movie weird thing is it's like it's a good it's a fun concept it's a good, it's, it's like Dexter Slab it's like Dexter Slab <laughs> but it's like it's not too similar it's like it's like it's like how Little Mermaid and Ponyo are similar it's really just the yeah, idea of it put those fish bitches yeah <laughs> yeah <'cause, laughs> um yeah. but it, it they they wanted to make a movie first because yeah money and plus cg was still a new thing at the time right so pixar was was just getting started with their yeah it might have been easier to sell as a A, movie um, at the time than a tv series because it was unproven in on television uh but easier because pixar was already thing because pixar and also dreamworks were kind of getting their start at the time this because and they were immediately successful yes exactly because toy story started out with Except for ants. ants. <laughs> but Jimmy Neutron yeah. was at the cusp of, of DreamWorks' success because it came out the same year as Shrek and Monsters, Inc. Right. And then at the, that was the first year that there was a Best Animated, animated Feature, feature and category all three of those movies at the Oscars. And were, they, they all show up and everyone has like a group hallucination at the Oscars. Yeah. They could see Sully. Sully and <laughs> Shrek and Goddard. And Goddard. They're like, dude, I'm fucking tripping right yeah, now. Yeah, it's funny. I'm seeing... Donkey Kong hair head ass Jimmy Neutron. Yeah, imagine being the woman being like, yeah, I sat next to Jimmy Neutron at the Oscars. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Hey, um, quick question. Yeah. Is she like taking a shit over there? Who's that? That's like Mona, I think is her name. From Genshin From Impact. Genshin Impact. Okay, so my brother has a poster her of Mona. Mona, and she's in this pose like she's she, taking a she, squat. She's squatting. She's like either Slavic squatting yeah. or shitting. It, on it's the same pose, right? I, like I, I don't know. Like she is about to drop one on the ground, and she's like looking back at the viewer and pouting. Like, like there is like what other context could there be for this image? I don't know. Like she's just doing this casually. Like just, maybe she's Slavic. Yeah, maybe she's know. just Slavic squatting. That'd be know. so funny if they, there is just like a <laughs> like an anime character who just like like a cute girl, but she's just super Slav. She's just, she's just super like. It's like there is like there all, all Adidas and shit. Yeah, <laughs> who's not Kiryu Coco? Yeah. Um. Anyways, Jimmy Neutron. Um. Jimmy, yeah, that's how that show came. Not to, Ron. The idea came to be. Okay, that makes a lot of sense to me. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, it's weird. It almost, I almost would have assumed that the movie came second. Yeah. Because right? there's no establishing of anything. There's just, mm-hmm. it's just like. Hey, there's this... It really feels like a pilot. Yeah. Like, here's Jimmy Neutron. He does things he, with his brain. Yeah, he, he, he brain blasts. He brain blasts. He only does it twice in the movie. Yeah. Which like, he is does it, like, every episode. Yeah, it is kind of like his thing. Yeah. Uh, and then... Uh, all the parents... So, there's another interesting thing about this film, mm-hmm. which I mentioned to you when we watched Other it. Other than is the that... fact that this is one of two Nickelodeon movies we've watched so far. That is only two... Technically, three have been nominated for Oscars. What was the other ones? Was Rango? Rango was the second one and and won the Oscar. Okay. And Wild Thornberry's got nominated for a Best Original Song. What the fuck? Yeah, for that Paul Simon credit song. What the fuck? Yeah. From Hall Notes? (laughs) From Hall Notes. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, so we've officially watched every Nickelodeon movie that's been nominated for an Oscar. Although, with the certain movie we're about to talk about, I wouldn't be surprised if a fourth one gets nominated. Maybe. Let's, we'll, let's save we'll, that. we'll talk about that. So, uh, the other thing I mentioned to you when this when we watched this was, mm-hmm. <laughs> excuse me, it it's and I don't consume children's media mm-hmm. very much unless it's you. Unless it literally it is me, <laughs> uh, because I'm an adult and I'm cool and I'm above the legal drinking age. When you one you don't drink. Oh and my god! Two, you but cry. I could if I during like kids media i oh my god i cried during winnie the pooh you did because it struck an emotional chord with me and i told you about it and you felt you were gonna cry last night when i explained it you to did you. i almost did cry you were gonna cry over shawarma you fucker <laughs> uh is that the uh all this to say i don't know what modern kids me children's media is like mm-hmm. but i feel like it's much rarer to see like a kids rule. It was much more common the, back then. This is a kids rule movie. Yeah, and I feel like when I was when we were growing up, that was also a more common thing. Yeah, especially in like 
TV shows and stuff like that. Yeah. Like a lot, especially Nickelodeon and, and Cartoon Network. We had a lot of those shows type. Like, uh, what's another one? Like Recess. Remember Recess? I never watched. You, I, I don't remember it, actually. It's a Disney show, but that that's kind of... When did that of, air? Huh? When, when, when Late 90s, that? early 2000s. I was not. Yeah, I wasn't. But that was like a, another show. There's like Kids Rule type thing. Yeah. Really Loud Parents could technically be another one. Yeah. Um, Dexter's Lab, another one. Kids Next Door. Is Kids a perfect, Next Door. Is a perfect oh, that's example. Super that. Yeah, that's a perfect example. And you know what I? You know what my theory was? Mm-hmm. I think it's because it was a lot of Gen Xer media. Because yeah. Because Gen Xers got raised by like a uh, silent generation. Yeah. Yeah. So like very old fashioned kind of stuffed up t- types of people. Mm-hmm. I think. Which they portrayed the adults in this movie yeah. kind of like that. Like, At least Jimmy's mom. Yeah. Kind of as like in that. like during like the fifties and shit. Yeah. That was. That was the baby boom, but mm-hmm. these those were babies. This was though that was like the people in charge. That's who like the people who made like nineteen fifties American culture. Yeah, where you go to fucking work in a suit, mm-hmm. and then Gen Xer stuff from the nineties was like very. It's so funny. I remember reading this book in high school as part of a. I forget what it was, but they dumped a bunch of books to like do reports on and one of them i picked it up and it was it was about like generational conflicts or something Mm -hmm. or like cultural conflicts yeah and it was like there's a a group a new group of 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 people that you know the older generation the baby boomer generations they're calling lazy entitled uh you know want want something for nothing like 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 that song uh <laughs> uh it's the they're called gen x and yeah. i like put the i was like dude no way they've been doing it this fucking long <laughs> no way they've been doing it since my dad. dad yeah um and i feel like that like gen x and a lot also a lot of boomers mm-hmm. to be fair raised people who were like made media that was more like expressive and out there and be yourself yeah. and then that trickled down so that the people who made then made media who grew up like that yeah. were like oh yeah just chill like just hang out or something uh-huh that's a dumb way to say it but, like, no, I, but you, the more, you get more it. like there wasn't like this oh authority whatever what have you uh-huh. you know don't question authority during a coronavirus <laughs> Dude, could you imagine rocket powering the coronavirus? Oh, God. No one's wearing men. They're like, dude, that's for losers. Or like um, the character that you could argue started all of this, like kids rule type thing, Bart Simpson. Bart Simpson. Dude, Bart Simpson would be totally be an anti-masker. He's like, dude, eat my mask. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. I don't know shit about the Simpsons. I know Homer eat donut. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I, like oh, that. I know Homer eat donut. I know Homer eat he enjoys a little donut once in a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the movie. I mean, okay, Jimmy Neutron is like. There's I a lot of much... assholes in this film, like literal buttholes, like but, like, like like rings. There is a <laughs> when they're building the. Uh, okay, so this movie's about Jimmy Neutron. Right. So yeah, I guess people don't know what it is. We should explain it to them just in case. Jimmy Neutron's a boy genius. He's a boy and, boy genius. A yeah. boy penis. Boy penis. And he he invents things. He invents things. He has a little robot dog. Goddard. I always thought Goddard was cool. Yeah, Goddard. I, I liked robots. Yeah, I like, like robot dogs. Like, yeah, yeah, like like yeah. um, Rush. Rush. Yeah. Friender. Friender. That's where I feel like that comes from in Japan. <laughs> As friender, friender, yeah. uh, um, and then he wants to go to, to a, a retro a theme, park, a theme park. Yeah, retro park. Yeah, theme park in Retroville. Yeah, they live in Retroville, Retroville, so they open this park called Retroland. Which shitty marketing uh, thing? Why would you open a thing? On they a open s- it on a school night. night. Why yeah. would you open a theme park on a, a school, school night? night. Uh, and then the parents are like, "No, you can't go because it's school night." Uh huh. And he's like, "What if I was a was a little bad boy? Yeah, I was a little." Well, this li- like, like, there's this collar. character like this kid who's like who look, literally looks like like if a nickelodeon exec animated sasuke nick nick his name, his is, name is literally nick. nick yeah he literally embodies like that cool kid type thing yeah he literally looks like a fucking american sasuke he's, he's got like greased t- that's one thing i just i sort of just on rewatch realized about jimmy neutron is it's very 50s for some reason like they live in retroville yeah they call it like retroville. diners and I like think- hugh kind of Feels like like a like yeah, a stand back. Yeah, a lot like of people that, dress like that. Yeah, like Hugh Weezer's a Carl Weezer. Carl Weezer. Yeah, 
He's saying, yeah, sorry. I he, They're both it, very virginal. <laughs> Carl Weezer. Yeah. Yeah, he's a... Uh, Carl is like a very 50s, like, Poindexter kind of character, right? Yeah. He's like, he's like, oh. And he's got his glasses and his suspenders and striped yeah, shirt. He yeah. looks like a carny. <laughs> he does, yeah. Uh, and then they're like, dude, what if parents just weren't even around? around. And it's like, watch out what you wish for. Because that might just be what you get. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, enter these these people, like these aliens called the Yolkians. Yolkians, yeah. Uh, Link uh, was the King, King Goobot, who, by the way, I surprised no none of us caught this until I looked it up. Yeah. Voiced by Patrick Stewart. Really? Yeah. <laughs> the the King, um, the yeah the main King guy is voiced by Patrick Stewart, which like I I like I look I look I listen back I'm like yeah that is him. It's totally it's totally Picard. <laughs> <laughs> and his little assistant voiced by um who does the voice of uh isn't his brother brother. No. Oh, there's the, no. oh, the brother. Yeah, yeah, the brother who's voiced by the guy that does the robot from Treasure Planet. That guy. Oh, I love Treasure Planet. I know you. You do. know I love Treasure Planet. So that's why I was like, oh, it's that guy. <laughs> uh, and then so they kidnap all the parents, and it's kind of like Mars Needs Moms. It is literally just a pl- the Mars Needs Moms, moms. except you know they need they it, need the dads it, too. Yeah. Why do they need the parents again? To sacrifice it to a giant chicken. That's, yeah, it's a little weird. What do you? Oh, I just I got a, dirt from your eye. I got dirt on my eye. Or like your eyelash, okay, eyebrow, whatever. Yeah, they, they, they. What's it called? Poultra, which <laughs> also has a fucking egg for an asshole. Yeah, it's got a big asshole. It, it's really distracting. It's like mid birth. Yeah, it is. Ugh. It's like that. Have you seen that the video of like the giraffe giving birth? No. It's like it, there's a there's a the back in 2017 there's like this giraffe. Uh-huh. It was like the most like watched live stream of the yeah apparently like this giraffe okay. giving birth and like right when it's about to it's like you can see like the the chat speeding up and like what? you can see like the like right when it's about to give birth it's like dangling from its ass oh, yeah okay. it's, well I, yeah this is the miracle of life <laughs> yeah yeah sure it looked like that I'm like oh uh what else was so, so they yeah. gotta go there, and they gotta stop them, and they can breathe in space. Because fuck do, you, dude. There is a scene in the show where it's pretty funny. Oh, they call that out, right? They do yeah. call it out. It's like Sheen's like, "Hey, why don't we breathe in space?" Well, it's easy, Sheen. And it just cuts to, to Carl <laughs> singing the song, and then it cuts yeah. back, and he's like, "Sheen's like, wow, that's fascinating." <laughs> so they they're, they're aware of it. Yeah, it's really funny. <laughs> um. I, I don't know. It's like it's a fine movie. It it's just feels like an, it movie. feels like a two part episode of yeah. Jimmy Neutron. You could you could have easily yeah. You, this could have easily been like a two parter. Yeah, like those Timmy Jimmy Power Hours that they used to do. Or there were just other two parter ones that they would do. There, I think there were other ones. I can't, I can't yeah. think of them. But yeah, it's really like insane to think that this was like one of the few movies that was nominated for an Oscar. I mean, like, what else are you gonna do that year? Atlantis: The Lost Empire. Oh, but no one watched that. True. Sorry, correction. Kids didn't go see it, so the people who vote on Oscars didn't care about it. That is they true. They don't give a fuck about innovation. <laughs> what Tygen just said is uh, technically yeah, it's true. Only that they only go to what their kids like or grandkids yeah. probably drag them to go. The, the, the literal voters, I've checked like what people vote for for like recent best animated feature. It's always Christmas. They always huh? It's always kids' movies. It's always kids' movies. And like occasionally like an anime movie. Yeah. But they always pick like I, I I like I read votes and it's like that's that's me loves pick, he picks the anime losers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He picks the, like or like the the common voter like reasoning for voting is like, oh yeah, I watched with my kids. I'll no, choose this one. It. Yeah, no, that's, that's it. That's why Disney and Pixar movies always consistently win best animated feature. Yeah, there are only like a few times like, believe it or not, DreamWorks technically only has two wins. What was it for? So the first year, actually, Shrek, Monsters, Inc., and Jimmy Neutron, they won Shrek. Did the... Yeah. Hmm. I don't think Jimmy Neutron should have won. <laughs> I mean, I think... It's not that good. <laughs> it's just to... Yeah, just to... to, to... I think, is this good, better Monsters, Inc.? Shrek better Monsters, Inc.? I think Monsters, Inc. is better, personally. I, I was, my gut reaction was to go Monsters, Inc., but I'm like, is that just because I'm too familiar with Shrek... <laughs> I think Shrek Two is the better movie, to be honest. It probably is. And yeah, and awesome. the other their other Oscar win was 
technically Wallace and Gromit Curse of the Were Rabbit is a is a Dreamers movie. Right. But it is more an Ardman movie than it is Huh? Oh sorry. I was gonna ask what one the year Prince of Egypt came out. But they that didn't, didn't have, have that. that. Yeah. Which is a shame. That movie's awesome. I think they won the best animated uh, uh best original song that year though. Okay. Which is cool. Yeah. That movie's really good. <laughs> I think it's alright. I like it. I, I think it's 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 an admirable effort for yeah. uh, for a studio who's known for pee pee poo poo CG yeah. animation. It's really interesting to do like we're gonna do a Bible story. story yeah, which I wish there was more of because I don't know. There's a lot of cool stories from the Bible. Yeah, I want the story about. Um, I want like maybe they could get Justin Roiland to do the story of Lot. <laughs> do you know what I? Yeah, Lot. He fucks his daughters. Yeah, yeah. In a cave. Yeah. They have a crazy... You could apply that to anyone, though. What do you mean? Like, you could you could say that about, like, Bill Cosby or something. No, because Justin Roiland loves incest. I thought. Oh, that too, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was... Because you made a joke about it earlier. Yeah, yeah. I, I was following you up. Dude. I was trying to, like, forget about that, I think. <laughs> okay, I never forget. <laughs> does he have siblings? I think he does. I'm pretty sure Ooh, does. that makes it worse. Yeah. If yeah, you yeah. don't have siblings, it's like, okay, well, it's not, like, real for you. But if you yeah. do... It's like, Ooh, are they are they brothers? Do you have brothers? Maybe I don't know. Okay, if he has a sister, that's like ooh, yeah, I'm more like Sustin Royland. <laughs> um, uh, Jimmy Neutron is a lot better as a as, is a, show. as a show. I really don't have much to say because it's it. like it's fine. It's like oh, every episode, it's so obvious. Oh, every episode, there's a new invention. Yeah. Oh, something goes wrong, wrong. Yeah. and then Jimmy has to fix it or something. Yeah, like that, that is literally every and episode. Then Carl goes. Well, I'm just like Buddy Holly, <laughs> and and Sheen is like, like I'm Mary Tyler Moore. Look at all show. <laughs> I got my own show. <laughs> what did you call Planet Sheen? I called it the Cleveland Show. The Cleveland Show, yeah. which like oh, I need to open a window. It's getting really. You gotta boring. open a somebody. Open a window. That's from 1776, the musical about the Declaration of Independence. What? It was a musical called 1776. It's a oh, movie. Really? And it's a bunch of... It's like a white Hamilton. And and, and it's funny. like a musical about the founding fathers. Uh-huh. And there's this whole... Can somebody open a window? Okay. It was y- fun. Yeah. Um, I fucking hate Planet Sheen. Really? It's, it's bad. It's really I don't really have them, any memory of it. It... it I, remember, I, I remember being there when it first like aired me too yeah because it, it aired the same day as a what was it tough puppy that that butch it heart did yeah it did yo they were like doing a dual like a debut and uh both of those shows are awful <laughs> you don't like tough puppy it's very i thought it was fine it's as a, a kid it's it's a show yeah it's one of those things so, where it's like <gasps> you have it in the background you don't really care about it i remember my dad being like is this really odd parents <laughs> Yeah, which is funny. I'm it, like, no, it's just like the same guy or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah Jimmy Neutron is fine. It's a fine. It's a fine way to spend an afternoon. Yeah, if you have nothing to do and you're just like a Nick movie. How good would this movie be to like have on like while you're having sex? Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. It's a perfect movie to have. Perfect. Yeah. Every time I look at Carl, I just yeah, you go. Aww. I just oh Carl we can talk about he, something he, before we talk about the next Carl movie. helps me last longer there's a scene in this okay, movie whatever. where I laugh my holy ass shit I think that's the off. funniest the, the most I've ever seen you laugh at something no it was that or it's like this and uh this woman is fucking a midget from trapped in the closet yeah, 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 yeah. the midget scene um, there's it's when the kids do you want to you explain there's a okay so like there's a like there's a scene beforehand where they're like enjoying life because there's no parents in town yeah to sit to the ramones like the only song like ramones song that anyone ever uses oh yeah it's the only one the only one you yeah. you guys know what it is um after they show a scene after like the like showing like the pros it's like the day after it's like the pros and cons of like what oh, everyone's having fun oh, oh wait oh wait we're stupid kids we don't Shit. we can't we yeah. can't run a fucking dude so many people would have died Exactly. There would have been so many deaths. There would have been a, dude, at least a kid. Who's death. running the the power plants? <laughs> yeah, who's, I know. Who's who's running electricity? Well, who's 
Who's running the banks? <laughs> yeah, who's running a fucking uh, PG&E over here? Who's managing the sewers? <laughs> who's building the roads? Yeah. There's th- who's in the hospitals? Did they take the sickly people too? Maybe. Did they take? Did they just leave like the the old like the really old people? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. It's dumb and it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. They anyway, don't, they don't really. Go on. So they they have like this thing where they interview like kids of like yeah yeah we regret having our our yeah we regret oh no we we want our parents back. They cut to this kid. He looks like I don't know how to describe him. He looks like he looks like. What does he look like? He looks like he looks like the kid. He from- looks like Gary Coleman. <laughs> he looks like he looks like Gary Coleman. He's like we we had a we, we had a we had a eating contest. We had a contest to see who could eat the most cotton candy. candy? And it pulls out, and he's like a balloon. Yeah, and, he goes, and I won. And you laughed. I so laughed fucking my, hard. I don't think I've ever laughed harder. <laughs> In a Nickelodeon marathon movie, like unintentional laugh, like well, that's a, supposed to be a joke. That's a joke. Okay, maybe that's obviously a joke. The, like probably the hardest I've laughed at any moment in a Nickelodeon movie. S- sans maybe this next movie. Um, actually, no. no I'd say, I'd say you this, did not laugh that hard during the next one. Uh, I, I then I I laughed pretty hard during this, and it it was like. Man, dude, we had to pause the movie. We had to pause it for like a good we had five to minutes. Pause it so she could catch her breath. I was dying. If you can find that scene on YouTube, oh, it's totally on there. It's yeah. totally on YouTube. It's, <laughs> it's holy shit. It's like, dude, it started. You started giggling, and it kept going. It just it <laughs> built up into this like. That's called build up and payoff, <laughs> right there for and a joke. I won. <laughs> You're laughing. They had a contest to see who could eat the most cotton candy. It, I was laughing. And you're laughing. <laughs> it, yeah. That's uh, really all I have to say. I can't think of anything That's else. really the last thing I it's, wanted to it's mention. It's totally fine. Yeah. Do um, you want to move on to... The final... To Tumnut? Tumnut. <laughs> uh, yeah. Here we go. Uh, we, so, so just today, Kat's mom was like, I want to go see the Ninja Turtles movie. There is, yep. A, Which, that was her idea. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and she's like, you guys want to? I'm like, yeah, why like, not? Yeah, sure. Um, I guess to, before we talk about this movie, we should talk about our history with the Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Yeah, I have a long sexual history with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Have that... you seen the, the porno? The 10-inch Mutant Ninja Turtles? <laughs> sorry, the, sorry, the what? There is a Ninja Turtles porno. The it's 10-inch Mutant Ninja Turtles. The Timped? The Timped. Sorry, Tim and... They call... They, they all have, like, porn names. I, I remember they call, like, the Shredder the Sphincter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it... No, it's either Shredder or, or Splinter they called the Sphincter. Oh, no! They called the Shredder the Spreader. Oh, yes! <laughs> Hold up, I gotta look this up now. And they call K- Casey Bones. Oh, okay, that's that's uh, easy. Ten-inch inch mutant... mutant. Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtle. Tato House. <laughs> small, small Tato. 2016. This was like around the time the, the, that Michael Bay Ninja Turtle oh, was. Oh, I feel coming like out. I've seen you the probably shot seen, of April O'Neil. Yeah, you've probably seen something. From uh, it. Let's see. I can just read the, the IMDb for the... The, <laughs> the 10 inch mutant Ninja April Turtles. April O'Neil and Casey Bones go at it. Then the Ninja Turtles blow their green load on April oh, O'Neil. No. Why did they not come up with a funny name for her? I, 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 I don't know. It's because the fucking actress's name is April O'Neil. I is totally actually? forgot about this. I totally forgot about that. There's a porn actress who goes by April O'Neil. Oh, there is. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I completely forgot about that. Okay. S- spreader. spreader. Master Sphincter. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Leon Hardo. <laughs> uh, Don G- Don Gatello. Don Gatello. Oh, Don Gatello. Okay, I was reading that. I was like, Gatello. Don Gatello. Uh, uh, Michelangelo Blow. <laughs> and <laughs> Raphalis. <laughs> <laughs> Raphalis. That's a good one. I like that. That's a good one. I'll okay. give him that one. Yeah, um, uh, I've seen that. No, I'm just kidding. So what TMNT stuff have you seen? So, What's your familiarity? Of course, I had the toys. I have. Yeah, I, I saw have, them. You sh- I showed them to you. Yeah, you had Genghis Frog. I had. We'll, we'll talk about the great, the, the great the, Genghis, the great Frog. Genghis Frog in a bit. Yeah. Um, I love the '80s cartoon. I, I generally do. I think it's. I, 
Of all, you don't have to like. You, you're clearly insecure about it because I didn't even look at you, and you were like, "No, no, you can't really." Like, you, can do, you can say you like the 1980s. I fucking like the Transformers cartoon from the 80s. I don't. Well, fuck you then. <laughs> <laughs> I think of all of like the 80s. You think of like Thundercats, He Man, Transformers. Gem could technically also be one. Yeah. I think that TMNT is definitely the best of all of them. Okay. I'd say. Okay. Because I feel like they, the, the TMNT have personality. Are you telling me that Star Cream? Star Cream? Star Scream. It's like the porn name. Oh. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. What, um, what, Megadong? Megadong. Uh, Cocktimus Prime. Cocktimus Bumble Bitch. I don't know. <laughs> uh... Cumblebee. Cumblebee, there you go. Yeah, be... uh, Jizz. <laughs> you need, well, that's easy. That's so easy. I know, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I like I like TMNT. I think I just mm-hmm. I, I think what caught me about it was like I love the mutant. You like, like mutant. You like fucked up mutant I like freaks. Fucked up mutant freaks. Oh, dude. Ew. Okay, when you said it, it was like it's, gross. It's just perfect for like a toy mm-hmm. and a character. And as we go Such along, a funny thing to say. It, as we lo- go along in this movie, that it, it, it had what it's I perfect would... for a toy and a character. It's it's, just, it's you just, usually it's... don't get both because yeah. what you you just get like oh this character is a robot this character is no a but... skeleton oh, fine okay whatever it's just, he is a skeleton it, with a funny voice with funny <laughs> voice yeah um, I don't know I like the, I like the eighties cartoon I like the Nickelodeon one too. I the good. newer the tw- one? There's been so many. There's two by Nickelodeon. There's the, the CG one. Yeah. And there's Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Which... Oh, the Michael Bay one? No, 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 no. No, no, no it's no, like no. the it's like a 2D animated yeah. show. Oh, 2D? It's 2D animated. Really? It's one of the okay. few where April is black. Is that recent? Yes, it's like 2018. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. Um, I watched the 2003 one a little bit. Is that the movie? The CG, no, no, no. CG 2003 movie? one is like, the, the, like a 2D cartoon. It's like a more serious take on Is the that turtles. the one in the future? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I know that bit. one. I feel like I've seen one episode of that. Uh-huh. And speaking of that CG movie, I saw that one as well. Not, okay. Not, not too big on that one. I think it's all right. And I did see the Bay Turtles in both in theaters. Okay. And they're... Probably bad. We'll get to them because they're Nickelodeon movies. Is we'll get... uh, the Fox Lady in there? Megan Fox. Megan Fox. She's April O'Neil. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about those movies when we get to. Them. We'll we'll cross that bridge when we get to. Yeah. Them. We'll we'll. Yeah. I'm surprised we haven't landed on those yet. We did, and we then did. you said, "I don't want to fucking watch." We that. landed on the second one because I. Oh, right, we yeah. wanted to do the, the first second, one first. Second Bertles. So, so we'll we'll get to those when we get to those. We have very different knowledge oh, of what I love the the Jim Henson Ninja Turtle movie. Love that movie. Oh, the, the, the yeah, 90s. the live action ones. Yeah. Go ninja, go ninja, go. I like it because it has vanilla ice in it. Yeah, and the second one does. My favorite white guy. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, I pretty much almost consumed every piece of Ninja Turtle media, and I like it. Okay, it's up there. Have you watched the, um, the this the stage mu- uh, performance? Are you talking about the Christmas thing? No. Um, coming out of the shell. Yeah, I have. have, I, you, have yeah. I think that's the only. Okay, so I was gonna say, for my history with the Tum Nuts, the only things I've ever really seen, I've watched the Nostalgia Critic video on the t- cartoon, the original '80s cartoon. Uh-huh. I've watched the two thousand whatever CG movie. Mm-hmm. I had 2007. the two thousand seven, and I had the DS game for that. Mm-hmm. And I've watched the F- Phalus videos. On coming out of their shell, both tours. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which I love those videos. Uh-huh. <laughs> those, those are really funny. Um, so that is, I mean, does it really matter? <laughs> does it? I know their basic personalities and the premise. Leonardo is the leader. Leonardo, he's the leader. Nardo. Naruto. <laughs> no, leader Nardo. Nar- Leo. Leonardo. Leo. Yeah, Leon. Leonardo. Le- Leon Kennedy. Leon Kennedy. Uh, Raphael. Raphael is. He's the big boy. Michelangelo likes improv. He's the party dude. And uh, Donatello he does, does machines. machines. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you know. Yeah. He you know he does machines. He does machines. <laughs> he fucks the machines. Okay, dude. Like, slow it down. We we get this it. This is you're not in. the teenage the ten inch movie Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Turtles. Okay. okay. Um. That's that's my extent. I mean, like, it doesn't really. Yeah, all you need to know. It's kind of like Warhammer. 
Yeah. You just need a basic understanding yeah, of, the setting, of the setting. Then you can kind of watch anything. You could literally watch. <laughs> kind of, yeah, it is kind of like Transformers or, or He-Man in a way where it's like... It's you very can, transferable. You can, you can pick and choose which yeah. iteration you would like. I don't know shit about He-Man, though. I know Me that, neither. That's the dude. I can't believe they called him He-Man. What what the fuck were they thinking? I don't know. You sound like ABGN right now. <laughs> what were they thinking? No, legit. What kind of a name is that? I don't know. It's so. It sounds like a joke. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, what was that? What the hell was that? That scared the shit out of me. Is that your mom? I, I don't know. I wonder if that picked up. There was a. It was, it's like, a, it was like a conjuring type thing. thing. So we went yeah. to go see Mutant Mayhem. Mutant that's what it's Mayhem. Called. Yeah. Great title. Yeah. Better than He Man. <laughs> yeah, better than He Man. Yeah. The Turtle. That's what it would have been called. He he turtle. (laughs) So I had no expectations of this film going in. Neither did I. Uh, It looked cool. We just saw it on a whim. I didn't want to see a trailer. Well, you know me. I don't watch trailers. We saw. We got a few of these trailers for like other movies. Did we? Because I forgot about it. (laughs) Mario. We got the trailer for TMNT. Barbie. We we got the trailer for. Oh, we did. See, I forgot about it because I don't remember that. We got stuff. We got a. It was shockingly for the amount of trailers and 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 like buzz this movie's getting apparently not doing very well not doing very well at the box at the old bo (laughs) the bo yeah the box office but perhaps maybe this will get a puss in boots last wish treatment and get better with the week yeah plus the fact that there's so well that's kind of spoiling what we think of it because split spoiling what we think of it. we were just getting to that yeah so neither of us went in with any I knew what it looked like Uh uh-huh and I know it's a manina to maninda turtle movie turtle and Nimbus you turtle. also apparently did not have any expectations. I thought it looked cool from the trailers. It, uh-huh. I like. I, I'm I'm always open for a movie that doesn't use the Pixar DreamWorks type of style. Yeah, uh, I'm open for that. Even for movies that you may not like, like Nimona. I, no, I, I'm, I'm okay. I, I love the. I, I know your problem wasn't for that movie. It's not the animation. Yeah. But I, I'm op- I'm open to. I love this era of Spider Verse animation of like what it's done to the medium of like film. No, I was thinking about that too. Watching this, uh-huh. I'm like, wow, I don't know if this could have been made uh, ten and years looked ago. like this with before Spider Verse. Yeah, um, or the Peanuts movie. That's another one. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So um, going in, I was like, okay, so maybe this will be like the Spider Verse equivalent for the TMNT. And yeah, it kind of is. It's almost. Freddy, it's. I'd almost say it's barely, almost just as good as the original Spider Verse. Yeah, and both uh, both movies. I'm like pretty happy with how this turned honestly, out. Honestly, it exceeded my expectations. Yeah. So this is in that category of it didn't really hit for me personally, mm-hmm. but I think it was a really good movie. Is this like Puss in Boots? I guess unless that one hit you more. Oh, uh, sorta. Well, okay. Well, you know when I talk about Tiger movies. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. This is like, uh, what would I... Uh, actually, a lot like Spider-Verse. Really? Spider-Verse was not something that appealed specifically super to me. Uh-huh. But I'm like, oh no, this is like all really good. Uh-huh. It's yeah. just not going to be the thing that I'm like... <laughs> I'm not going to be doing that over it. Although I could imagine like someone not being a big fan of the Turtles... And oh no! This absolutely, they would love. No, this. like a kid would really like this. Uh-huh. Because I'd um, honestly argue this is the best Ninja Turtles movie. I haven't. I've only seen the one. You've only seen the one, yeah. Uh, you think it's better than the live action ones? I know people like those a lot. I'd say it's like a tip top better than the first uh, '90s movie. Okay. Which is probably I'd say like not counting this movie like the best before this. Okay. This is a really good I, movie. I this liked is it really a lot. Good. We yeah. should, so we should probably stop saying that and actually talk, talk about, about why. The, why the movie? We'll, we'll so, talk about the what the movie. We'll talk about it from the beginning. Man. So why not? Immediately, the thing I told you about this afterwards. Immediately, the thing that struck me was the visual style yeah. because it was it reminded me of Psychonauts. Yeah, you described it as like Psychonauts with like a bit of like this like scribbly effect to it yeah sketchy sketchy like it's it's like what someone it's like miles morales's sketchbook type beat it's kind of like okay that. sure <laughs> it's like it's yeah. like someone's like doodling on like um there's a lot of little scratches and yeah but also like shapes shapes yeah and stuff drawn into things uh-huh. and it's not just like here's shading it's there's a, it's a little more like i don't know yeah a little more stylized there's mm-hmm. a lot of it's not like the Spider Verse level of like, oh, there's a bunch of text everywhere and stuff, but yeah, but vis- the art style itself—it's it's like it's like a um, 
like a stylized comic, I guess. Yeah, sure. every everything's really lumpy. Nothing everyone's is proportionate. Of, yeah, yeah, which I like. Everyone's lumpy and uh-huh. a little funky looking, mm-hmm. um, including the humans. Yeah, <laughs> the humans think is funny. too are, are like all like disproportionate. Yeah, like, like psychonauts. I like that the turtles each like body wise looked really different. Yeah, they all had. That's always been like like you can't tell who any of these fuckers are in black and white. <laughs> yeah, which is thing. a funny thing. But in, but in, in this, like, uh-huh. it's like they had. They had easily, like they yeah. had like um, their. Their their body types also uh, yeah. fit in with their personalities. Yeah, like especially like some like Raphael. Raphael's a big big old a big, big old brick, mm-hmm. and Donatello's a little, little lanky. Little lanky, and Michelangelo's got a big ass head. He does, yeah, and he's which, like literally brighter. He's like a brighter shade he's, of green than everyone. Which I think of the other turtle movies and uh, media, he's always always the brightest one. That literally, quite literally, yeah. And Leo is. Yeah, he's turtle. He's, he's turtle. He's turtle guy. He's he's like the default character you choose in a game. Yeah. <laughs> um, so like the one of the first shots was in this like hallway or something, and it was just moving down the hallway, or yeah, it was like around. It was like a, a, swooping up to the door. Yeah, you know, yeah, Baxter's yeah. lab, mm-hmm. and it was I played by Gus Fring. Gus, yeah, that guy. I thought he would have a bigger part of the movie, but nope. Did he die? I the, presumably is, dead. No, no, Giancarlo Esposito is he dead? The actor? Yeah, he's alive. He's well. Why alive. did I? Who died from Breaking Bad recently? Uh, Hector. 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 Salonga. Mark. See, I'm forget racist. It. I thought that I just, yeah, I just knew he was like not. I said a running theme of this was bigotry, <laughs> Jesus um, which will, which just pops up again in this film. Yes, which, it sure does. So anyway, so the shot of the hallway just to, to finish that. Uh, I was like, this looks. This feels like a scene out of a video game. Yeah, I feel like does, I'm looking at a yeah. video game where it's like a cutscene. Yeah, move or like the camera cinematically moving around, like in the environment, mm-hmm. in a good way. Everything in this movie, like the motion's really cool. Yeah, it feels like everything is like. Sometimes it feels like 60 FPS, and like sometimes it feels like 30. Yeah, it's like it's switches not, back and forth to being smooth and rough. It's not doing the thing that like Spider Verse, Spider Verse, or, or Puss in Boots, Boots did, where it was yeah. like really like twenty four frames limited, yeah, or twelve frames limited kind of thing. Uh, it's just slightly snappier and then slightly more fluid. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think yeah, a lot of the stylization was just in the vid- the art style. Yeah, um, it reminded me a lot of and you probably not not seeing this movie, but you know about it, Mitchell's versus the Machines. I I don't even know what it looks like to be honest. If you see, if, if I showed you a clip from it, you'd be like, "Yeah, this this a lot of mut- what Mutant Mayhem has mm-hmm. that movie had too." Okay. So, the plot. Well, it's like a teen. It's a Tim in- teenage. It is a TMNT ninja, plot. It's a Ninja Turtles origin story kind of. What's well, It's not really. An it reminded me. I was gonna say this reminded me a lot of the Batman, where it's like. They're kind of... We're they're, jumping for, like... We don't have to do it's, the whole origin story. Origin story, but it's, like, in between. It's, like, getting, like, like them kind of, like, learning the ropes of being a yeah, hero. Yeah, it's, like, a year one kind yeah, of Yeah, year well, one. They're 15, so it's yeah. not exactly year one. This is, I will say this, speaking of, like, their age, this yeah. is, like, the first... One of the first times where I feel like they totally em- emphasize on the fact that they're teenage mutant ninja turtles because i feel like okay most yeah. like like the michael bay movies like even the other like 90s movies they, they feel, feel like, like 20 year olds or 20 year olds yeah adults this is the one of the few times where they emphasize the fact that they're teenagers that's really true and i see because i have such limited exposure so i picked up on the, that but i didn't get it in like the relation to the other stuff uh-huh but you're totally right now that i think about this is it. totally like if you want teenage mutant ninja turtles this is it yeah they're they're 15 years old and they, and they act and they like say 15. The, they say the word riz. They say they say <laughs> sus. They say su- well sorry April says April sus. April says sus. But she's also like 15. But yeah, true. She looks older. I thought she was like a college student or something. I think they wanted to match her to the fact that she's in co- uh, like a high schooler. Yeah, I think it would have been so I was anticipating Leonardo cuz he doesn't know about human being culture. Uh-huh. Being like asking her out and she's like, "Why well, aren't you like 15?" <laughs> dude that's I, i'm not a pedophile <laughs> like what the fuck i, I um, guess they kind of get that they're teenagers with each other so i guess well in this she, she's a, like a high school yeah, so they're like yeah. the same age basically mm-hmm. uh so wasn't april black in the comics initially so yeah this whole thing started like a, like a like a controversy like oh why is this is woke 
why is April black? But like, yes. With the borgering? With the borgering. <laughs> April was <laughs> initially. So many borgers. Because he's a little large guy. Okay. You know? <laughs> Shut up. Okay. Uh, yeah, that April was always it meant to be like a, a black character in the comics. The, the first iteration of the Turtles being the comics. Yeah. And it's just like I think in starting with the '80s cartoon, she just started being white, and it's just it's just something that's been translated that's, yeah. over to like every iteration up until Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles when she was black again. <laughs> because everyone, that, everyone yeah, was just fun, assuming everyone, everyone knows the '80s cartoon as like the more than the original comic. Yeah, I didn't know that April was black until it was until I saw it online. I'm yeah, like, hey, it was in the comic she was black because I've never read them. Yeah, I I, I I don't I'm not too. That's like one of the few I'm like not. That in too familiar with, but I know yeah. things like that. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's like, well, it doesn't even really matter. No, it's her d- characterization who, who, who is does fuck? feel much more different than most other iterations, though. Uh, I think I wonder if it's just because she's younger. That's true. Because you know, when you think April, you think of like this voluptuous, sexy, like <laughs> reporter girl. Yeah. Here, she's a fuck up. She just consistently like even like her backstory, like her old thing is yeah. like. Yeah, I want to be a reporter, but, like, I can't because I... Well, she has stage fright, she has and stage... she's unpopular, and... She, she, yeah. She has, like, this really uncomfortable vomit scene that lasts... That was a little too long. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, it felt... It literally felt like a Family Guy bit that they did. <laughs> there, have you seen this? There's Where it this goes fam- on too long. And it's also vomit. Oh, God. They they drink, like, a cup of, like, Ipitac or whatever the fuck. What is Ipitac? It's, like, something that makes you vomit. Okay. Yeah, that's another Family Guy clip that people are all familiar with. It it, it, it it feels like a Family Guy bit that goes on for too long. And the way that it it looks like... I, I, I don't know. It looks like Nickelodeon slime. It does look like Nickelodeon slime. Yeah. It's just, like, oh, funny. That's but... where it comes from. Ugh. <laughs> I don't want to think about that. <laughs> We're about to eat dinner soon after this. I don't um, think about that. Yeah. yeah, it's just like I I like her arc in this though. Oh yeah, it's, no, it's very as, sweet. As as someone who doesn't really know the character, I, I vaguely know her as being kind of spunky. She's a very she's and kind of like Lois Lane. In I was gonna literally just about yeah. to say that she's like a very Lois, and they're both reporters. She's got to get the scoop. Yeah, um, yeah. I well, I guess to tell you about the plot. Uh-huh. So the movie opens and they're like 15 uh-huh. and they live in the sewers with their with master splinter who's like, like jackie they, chan you've played jackie chan oh, i didn't even realize till the end and they really crank up the old old old, old asian parent thing yeah with him <laughs> which i thought was was which they kind of do in the other ones too okay in the 2012 nickelodeon cartoon they do okay they do up that up i figure that okay i know in like the 80s one he's more just like the sensei yeah, yeah, yeah. That's he's kind of like thing. he's kind of like that. Um, what's that? Like Mr. Miyagi. Master Miyagi. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so uh, they immediately established, "Yo, we are turtles. We are racist as fuck." <laughs> yeah. They say that's like they they say like so fuck the, humans. So there's like an overarching thing in this movie uh-huh. of bigotry, acceptance, and bigotry, mm-hmm. and why you you know yada yada, and. Uh, so people they've had experience they do they go back and do the whole origin story mm-hmm. in like a quick little little Scene. cut through which i was glad was not i don't know i like how they handled it i did too it was like it was very tasteful this could have been really annoying and slow uh, yeah and it could have been forced like yeah. like hammered on the head like yeah we get it yeah no, it was it was pretty fun. They did the way it in a very yeah, a very nuanced, almost kind of like heartfelt. Like I almost got like it was sweet. They I were, felt well, they were like, trying yeah. to drive in that he's their dad. Yeah, they they wanted to be like okay, you get the relationship between them, mm-hmm. and you can see I, I like the way that their relationship was actually written. It was yeah, because they don't really delve into the like like the whole the like parent child parent parent child relationship and like other um of the iteration maybe they do but i can't really remember like how like emphasized it was at least compared to this movie Mm -hmm. but i do really i think it's like really sweet and i i I really almost got teary-eyed oh i was like oh (laughs) that's kind of sweet because so it's like okay well they obviously love their dad yeah and they respect him a lot Mm -hmm. and they totally understand why he doesn't like human beings because 
the people throw shit at them because they're freaked they're out freaks, that there's a yeah. rat man. <laughs> and I'm a rat man. <laughs> I'm a rat. I ain't no snitches. <laughs> hey, that guy's in New York too. <laughs> he literally is. Yes. It's funny. Yeah, there's there's oh, I love the bit where they see Leonardo says like Leonardo tells him that they were out late uh-huh. or that they went out. Um, and they're like, dude, you rattle us out. And he's like, don't say that like that. Yeah, and they're like, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Whoa, 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 sorry, Dad. Not only that. 2023, come on. That was pretty funny. That is pretty funny. <laughs> um, it's like, they get it totally, but there's like a little resentment. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, so they kind of start working around it. And then, I don't know. I really like the themes in this movie, actually. Yeah. I think it was decently subtle. Mm-hmm. I think it could have been better served if there was like... If, like, America Ferrerica came on and had, like, a two-minute monologue at the camera about how hard it is to be a turtle. and Man, all the you different... are not going to let that scene go. Wow. Come on, bro. And, all, and, you know, and all the, or like, you know, you got to be slow, but they want you to be fast. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. I know you're fucking with me, but I'm like, okay, yeah, we get it. Oh, you're pulling up the, is your boyfriend sexist? reaction to barbie <laughs> bingo things <laughs> cha-ching Ch- oh man damn it <laughs> fuck uh, anyways uh yeah i feel like the it reminded me a lot of funny enough puss in boots of like how that message of like mm. like death and like it felt very nuanced in that oh, movie yeah and, okay. and in the same way that no i'm not saying that yeah, I was just, okay yeah, i'm saying like, like the way they handled it was very similar in that like it's not beating you over the head with it it's mm-hmm. very subtle and it's a very sweet and in, in the same way that puss in boots did it's a very sweet in the way that that movie oh, did yeah. it no i and i yeah. felt i was like yeah i felt like genuine emotion for a fucking ninja turtles movie which i was yeah. not expecting yeah I... I just wish you know transformers did that shit too yeah. 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 I just wish, you know, more movies based on toys, like like Barbie and this, had, like, you know, like, actually taught something. Yeah. Transformers teaches you that it's boom, okay boom, to, it's okay to commit a war crime if you're a robot. Yeah. If you just shoot that guy in the fucking head. <laughs> it seems crazy. Oh. You know the one I'm talking about? Yeah, I know the one you're talking about. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I... I uh so the pre- so okay so the whole idea is there's there's other mutants. I, there's other mutants they've been alone their whole lives mm-hmm. and they've been these outcasts from society and then they find out that oh there's through april through a, a run-in with april mm-hmm. i really like that action scene oh where they're beating when, up the guys in the garage oh when they just meet april they're yeah like the first her. when they're getting the bike back okay yeah i do like that scene it's very like frenetic it's very energetic it's oh yeah like, it was really fun it, i know i'm like i love that scene yeah, it was. Uh, I like the choreography a lot. There's like uh-huh. I think there's, there's there's four people. We have there's four characters there's fighting, like a whole group of, and they're all doing different yeah. stuff. And mm-hmm. yeah, like again, hey, props to the storyboard artists. Yeah, because <laughs> like very very it was, complicated scene. It, it felt very like Edgar Wrightish in that scene, like the way that thing was choreographed. Yeah, a it little felt bit. like Shaun of the Dead or Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, like the way that thing was like honestly uh, like staged or choreographed. Yeah. Uh, oh, I totally forgot the way that they, I really, I thought it was really funny. The way that they learned martial arts was through like VHS instructional yeah, videos. Yeah, it reminded me of like those things you'd see in like Best of the Worst. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, like that kind of video you'd see. I thought see. that was so funny. Like, it's like a white guy teaching you yeah, like, like kung fu. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, that's really funny. I like that. With like 80s hair and a mustache. <laughs> Which, yeah, like, sh- that you know, Splinter guy. also has. Yeah, I love that he has 80s like afro. Yeah, like an afro. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Um... So, uh, they're like, oh, well, if we, uh, uh, April, because mm-hmm. she says they have this whole conversation. She's like, well, if you didn't save me, I probably would have thought you guys were g- creepy and monsters. Mm-hmm. But because you saved me, I, w- I realized that you were actually, like, cool mm-hmm. and, like, chill like that. Yeah. And they're like, didn't hey. Didn't know Blood was chill didn't like know that. Bl- <laughs> didn't know Blood was chill Didn't like- know Turt was cool. Turt was like- chill like <laughs> So, they're like. Oh, what if we do that on like a mass scale and we do mm-hmm. like a good heroic act? Then people will realize that we're like good guys and they'll like us. So that's how they start on their quest to to uncover Superfly. Yeah. Who 
voiced by uh, Ice Cube. Ice Cube? Yeah. I could tell. I knew it was him when I'm he like, said. It's someone. It's totally when someone. When he said, 6 a.m. police knocking at my was door. Was that an Ice Cube line? That's an Ice Cube oh. uh, lyric. I'm surprised he didn't just straight up to, man, I'm having a good day. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Man, today was a good day. Dude, this is almost as good as a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, I knew from the... I know that there's other mutant animal guys in, from the, sh- the, in the cartoon. Cartoon and like other the, piece of media. Lore. Like Bebop and Rocksteady, I'm sure you're familiar with them. Yeah, those are the ones that I feel like are in everything. But I didn't... Yeah. So... Was Superfly ever like a significant so, character? So Superfly, I will say, is it's a, a it's a great name. Yeah, he's a great, it's a great so name for a villain. Cool, <laughs> he's made for this movie. Believe it or not, really? Yeah, he's a new character made for this movie. That's really crazy. Yeah, I thought I totally thought because does, doesn't Baxter turn into a fly? You said he does. That? Yes. What is he called? As is the fly? He's, is he just the fly? He's called Baxter Stockman. Oh, okay. <laughs> he just keeps his name. Okay. Yeah, he, Superfly, is a, I, I learned, as a character made for this movie. Does he become a villain? or is he Baxter still, Stockman? Yeah. He does become a villain, yeah. But he's still just Baxter Stockman. He's just called Baxter he Stockman. He never gets He never gets like a Superfly. Like, That's he, weird. Yeah, you, you would think that, like, oh, maybe he's super. No, Superfly is a separate... He's a separate character. Really impressive, actually. Yeah. I he, totally thought that, like... this. You thought he was a character. I thought it was an existing character. All the other characters, however, um, his crew, are mm-hmm. all characters from the, the media. Yeah. From other pieces of media. I know Wingnut because they're in the um, fighting game. <laughs> yeah. Tournament I, edition or whatever it's yeah, called. That's yeah, that's right. Yeah, Wingnut, a uh, Ray Filet, who's voiced <clears throat> by fucking Post Malone. Yeah, really? yeah, I yeah. Can, just in case you know, like some of these mutants, there's are a, voice- some crazy. Yeah, pull up the. I'm gonna pull up the cast. Yeah, pull up the cast because it's it's a it's an impressive uh, like cast of people that they got. TMT mutant. M- yeah, mutant. Mi- oh my god, not mutant melee. Oh my god, if I just search up mutant mayhem, it'll maybe come it'll up. yeah be yeah, pop up. There we go. This has a crazy cast. Yeah. At oh. least for the mutants, it's it's like one win. Huh? What did it win? What award did it win? Kids Choice Award? I don't know. Heartland Film Fest in the Truly Moving Picture Award. <laughs> the fuck? Sure. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> okay, what that is. fine. I, I love that category. Okay. Uh let's see. Okay. Okay. Maya Rudolph. Is oh, Maya this? Rudolph was Ultron, who is a character... U- Utram. Utram, who's a character from the is media, it? but it's not a human. Is that... Is it's she... an alien. Oh, okay, she's the milker? Yes. Okay. Oh, we should talk about that. Talk about the milker? Yeah, we'll, we'll get Okay, to that. a second. John Cena's Rocksteady, Seth Rogen is Bebop. Bebop. He shows up at the start of the movie? He like, does, like, a, a little introduction. There's like, a weird, like, like... intro, like, like, oh, hey, thanks for coming to support this movie. Yeah. I hope you enjoy it. Isn't there some, like, old movie that does that? A bunch of movies do that. Yeah. Like, uh, when I went to see the, the recent Jackass movie, I got an intro from Johnny Knoxville. Oh, really? Okay. Um, when I went to see Incredibles 2, there was, like, a little intro like that. Oh, okay. I didn't... I've never had that happen in a movie. There's a few, like, movies that do that. Okay. Uh, Rose Byrne? I don't... She's an actress. Okay. She's Leatherhead is a, is, is a guy. That's the alligator. Well, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. sure. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Natasha she... Demetriou she's is in, Wingnut. She's um, in What We Do in the Shadows. Oh, okay. Yeah. John Carlo Esposito is Baxter Stockman. Jackie Chan is Splinter. Ice Cube is Superfly. Paul Rudd is Mondo, Mondo Gecko, Gecko, who for some reason they He's credit saying, as introducing, introducing Paul Rudd. Rudd. Does he just want to get rid of the Ant Man lifestyle? <laughs> yeah, he's done nothing before this. Yeah. <laughs> he's a new man. Uh, Post Malone. Hannibal, Bur- Hannibal Burris is Genghis Frog. Frog. Jimmy Donaldson, the Times Square guy voice. Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast is in this movie, which I didn't realize till the credits. Yeah. Uh, Derek Wilson is Spider. I don't know. Uh, okay, well, now we're just I, getting I, into, like... I think the other people. There was one other funny credit that they had. Um, Alex Hirsch was in the movie? Wait. The creator of Gravity Falls? Wait, he's bossy... Go- oh, he's Scumbug. Scumbug, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, interesting. Um, there's a guy credited as... Man who thought a giant rat was a big cat, but it was actually a rat. rat. That's funny. Yeah, that's actually funny. Uh, Sign my baby mom. 
and then man who loves being young and free to go places <laughs> there's some good credits in this yeah they were they were really funny with the names yeah uh yeah that's an interesting cast it's an interesting cast i so superfly is so cool that's such a good name that's such a great it's such name. a good ass na- he's so fucking he's a great cool. villain honestly yeah like if you had never known anything about the tmnt you would assume he was like a character from i the- literally just said that. yeah which is funny, i know he's uh, a great villain uh yeah i i don't know i just i really liked the movie it's very it's pretty short it's like it's like 95 minutes yeah yeah it, but it it feels i don't know it feels like the right amount it feels just right yeah uh there's i don't know just it did the the i liked the segment i liked them i liked this might sound funny i liked how empathetic the movie was yeah where i liked how when they introduced superfly's backstory no his goons. goons I like how they're, the turtles are like, these guys are really cool. It's just kind of a shame that they're following this guy who's like kind of insane. Yeah. <laughs> and then that actually has a payoff uh-huh. where they realize... They realize. All, these full spoilers, I guess. Yeah. I, you guys know I spoil he, everything. He spoils everything. Um, I don't care. <laughs> where the, they're like, no, guys, there's totally like... You can just not kill everyone. Yeah, and they're and, like... Oh, and they're yeah. immediately like, oh, shit, really? okay cool um <laughs> uh, which i felt a little fast to me but eh, nah, why not we have um, 90 minutes yeah uh i really i really liked the thing between uh master sphinx master Splint, sphincter <laughs> master, you got used to their porn names oh, okay let's slow down <laughs> between master splinter i almost said it again uh-huh. and superfly I yeah, really like, I like that the, moment. That um like that kind of contrast between yeah, them. Because I totally didn't realize it until they have the shot where they look at each other and mm-hmm. I was like, Oh Yeah. That's really interesting. Mm-hmm. And uh I like how Splinter's kinda wrong, but not like he's like wrong in a nuanced way. Yes, yeah. Where he's like, Oh yeah, I totally had the reason for why I did this, but yeah. like I don't mean it in like a malicious way like what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's okay. He gets like a, a mirror up. Yeah. To to what what his like flaws in his line of logic. Uh huh. And I thought that was neat. Yeah. Um. Uh. I uh the the whole climax of this movie was fun. It's a very fun climax. Yeah. It reminded me a lot of Puss in Boots again. Like yeah. Both both of them having a giant. We got a big dude. Big dude. Yeah. <laughs> um. I like how everyone kind of is used to their advantage. Everyone shows up. Everyone, everyone does a thing. Everyone does something at least. And uh, I don't know. It's like everyone learns. Everyone gets like exactly where they have to be. Uh huh. And that's it's sad. It's pretty. It's satisfying. It is it's very a pretty satisfying, satisfying movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Like I genuinely can't think of anything. That I really disliked yeah. about it. Mm-hmm. Though, so I was surprised. Oh, this is a PG movie, right? Yes. I yeah. was a little surprised. The the vi- well, the violence is like, eh, it's like PG-ish. Mm. If your kid's not a pussy, <laughs> <laughs> you can handle it. Uh, or if the parent's not a pussy, I should say. Yeah. Um, the language was like a little harsher. They, like say, they, say, a they l- say piss off. They say, they're pissed off. They say like, what the hell? A lot. They, uh, a couple times. A couple times. Um, in places that I was like, I feel like that wasn't entirely necessary. Yeah. But it was like, yeah, it was fine. Like it did. I was. I was more. It was one of those cases where I was thinking about like the kids in the theater with us, which there were uh-huh. mostly kids in the theater. I mean, it's not Barbie, but it's like it's not. No, it wasn't that. Like, whoa, okay, what if? Like, yeah. What is a kid gonna think of this? But it was like, huh, okay. I wonder if the parents not happy with that. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's light. It's very... It's nothing bad. At least for me. Yeah. It's like, whatever. Just tell your... Okay, don't say those words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just don't say it. Which brings me to uh-huh. a question that we were going to talk about. Well, how did you feel about the pop culture stuff and, okay, the, and the slang in this movie? So, a lot of this movie... This movie, I, I'm going to presume, takes place in 2023. It's modern day. Modern day, yeah. at least. And a lot of the turtles do use a lot of slang. Like, like, really modern day. Really straight up modern like day. Like slang that has not existed until this year. <laughs> yeah, like they say Riz they and say they, say, Riz. they uh, say sus. sus. Um, um, it really feels they like... They talk about Avengers Endgame. 
They talk about Attack on Titan. They talk about Attack on Titan. Well, no, I'm saying like to date the film. It has yeah. to be at least after that. Yeah, at least after that. So after 2019. Yeah. And even I noticed in like when April O'Neil has like her like checkbook of questions, mm-hmm. one mm-hmm. of the questions is, what do you think was the cause of COVID? So, really? Yeah, I, didn't, I caught funny. that. So, so, wow. so clearly this movie, I guess, would take... It's like mean? modern day. Yeah, it's modern like 2023. day. It's um, like Because no one's wearing masks. Yeah, no one's wearing masks. So um, I do think it's interesting to see a movie. Like, it, it feels very jarring compared to like something like... Something oh, that feels yeah. more timeless, like Spider-Verse. Yeah. Where, where it does take place in modern... Where that takes place in modern day, but you don't feel it. Here, the turtles bring up like bts oh, yeah. and <laughs> they bring up BTS. they bring up anime like current anime oh yeah and they bring up like uh i don't know I'm trying to think of like they they say they essentially bring up stuff that like like a 15 year old would like at this time in, yeah. in their lives and depending on who you are it could be just like oh well that's part of their character others will see it as this feels really forced feels, yeah i think to for me at least yeah. it felt like a in between where it's like, okay, it's a little annoying, it's yeah. whatever, but it's like, that's a 15-year-old. It's about as annoying as a 15-year-old. It's about as annoying as a 15-year-old, so it's like, well, I can't get mad at that because it's accurate to what a 15-year-old would do at this time. It, it reminds me a lot of the only other, th- legitimately, the only other thing I can think of, of a piece of media that has any is kind of similar, is part nine of JoJo's. Really? So... There's going to be, no, I mean, there's fucking barely anything to spoil. It's like chapter six so far. But part nine takes place in 2023. Oh, it takes really? place right now. Okay. Um, Compared to part eight, which was 2011, mm-hmm. which is when that started running. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it just took 10 years to finish. So Jodio, the main Jojo, mm-hmm. and like his sibling and their friend, like they talk like Zoomers. Jodio is like 15. He's like, the little, he's like 15 or 16. He uh-huh. goes to high school. And he talks like a shithead Zoomer. And I think it's awesome. In the oh, first page, really? the first page or two of the manga, he they reference, they get pulled over by a cop. And Jodio, who's driving, says something like, or no, Jodio's in the passenger seat and his brother's driving. And he says like, I think you were jamming out to Dua Lipa too hard. Oh, you showed me <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. And I was like, oh. And then the cop is like getting close to the window. And Dragona, the brother, says, like, whoa, dude, can you... They're antagonistic towards police because they're shithead criminal children. Uh-huh. And he says, like, hey, dude, back off. Like, what if you have COVID or something? And that, like, really struck me as, like, whoa, I... Isn't that weird? Yeah. Isn't that weird that, like... It's so weird. The, the whole world was affected by something. To the point... And, where- like, there's been no acknowledgement of it in media. There's like that one Netflix movie with have you you've heard it's like a really controversial Netflix movie where it's like it takes place during the COVID era and and it's like it's like a romance movie like apocalyptic romance movie made by Michael Bay. What the fuck? Yeah, this is a thing. You can what search it, it up. Michael okay. Like Michael Bay like COVID movie where it's like it's like really it's a really harmful message to be telling during the COVID nineteen. Michael Bay COVID, COVID movie. movie. Oh wow, yeah, that's yeah, an auto popped up. Uh, Songbird. Songbird. That's what it's called. Yeah. Immune to the COVID-23 virus. Dude, get the fuck out of here. (laughs) A courier races against time to save the woman he loves from a quarantine camp. December 2020. You're fucking kidding me. This thing got, this thing got jizzed out. It has a 9% on Rotten Tomatoes. And it deserves that 9%. (laughs) This thing was, dude, what was the budget? This thing was thrown together in a, in like an afternoon <laughs> demi moore's in this oh no kj appa alexandra daddario she has boobies craig robinson what the fuck yeah this is a real movie this yeah is- i find so i find it weird that like it's this gigantic thing and even though we've been at in this thing for well we're technically out of it now it's like, yeah it's not it's, officially it's, not it's a pandemic lingering, anymore. but it's like yeah it's not it's like there was zero acknowledgement of it in media. Yeah. Like, no one's wearing masks. You watch a TV show. No one, and, like, did you have that thing during COVID, like, the first year or two, that where you watch something and you're like, dude, why aren't they wearing masks? Yeah, <laughs> like a split right, second. Right? 
And then you're like, oh, right, because this was made before COVID. <laughs> or during, and they just pretend that it was. Yeah. Isn't that weird? It is weird. I find it, I don't know. So that, that anyway, that was like a tangent. Um, maybe we'll get stuff after this that is like about COVID or something or, or takes place during that Potentially, time. Potentially, yeah. But yeah, the, so the only thing I can think of is like, they make references in part nine to like modern day music and not yeah. like memes or anything like <laughs> too much like that. But it's not memes. It's extremely, there's like a Breaking Bad reference. <laughs> it's also like, I'm pretty sure there's some kind of Breaking Bad influence because it's about like drug deal and Perhaps. stuff. Perhaps. Yeah, that makes sense. And Breaking Bad has been out for like 20 plus years oh, now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure someone said there was like a scene that was literally inspired by Breaking Bad. Or Probably. Like really I'm, close to it where he's I getting interrogated it. by a cop or something. Oh, I believe that, yeah. But yeah, I you you don't get something this and I feel like that's not like just like a now thing. I feel like it's always been a thing where No, yeah. Where anytime there's like we're gonna make something really hip, it's super out of touch. Yeah. And we just don't get it because we weren't around because back we then. Around that time, yeah, we don't get it. This is the first time that I feel like well, this is a rare time that I feel like they actually at least captured the way that people talk, and well, it little, felt genuine. Yeah, yeah, it felt genuine it, to our people, people of of this our time, pe- our people, our people, our people <laughs> of, of like of, or at least teenagers of of this generation. Yes, which we are not. Which well, yeah, we are not. <laughs> But we don't. Some people. But I mean, we're pretty age. close in age. We're range. close, and, and people our age do still. Say yeah. Sus. In, in, so, in, yeah. You say sus. I say sus. <laughs> I say fucking riz. You say, dude. You. I I say it. So I'm I'm guilty of it. So I I it. Mm, it, it they call me the riz cracker. <laughs> uh, oh, she's cringing right now. Oh, she's. I'm surprised they didn't say that. They didn't say cringe. They didn't. So they, they held back. Okay. They didn't say everything. Okay. But yeah, they talk about Leonardo's Riz. Yeah, I was, I was, which I was also I interesting because... I thought that was kind of funny. I, I, I find it interesting that mm-hmm. this time around they made Leo the one in love with April. In most, Who was it usually? Most iterations, Donnie. Really? Yeah. I didn't I know, know that. I know in the 2012 cartoon at least at le- it, it is, but I don't know. Huh. In, in most, it is Donatello, at least okay. from what I remember. So okay. it's interesting sure maybe maybe there is another iteration where it's leonardo but i don't know hmm. i didn't even realize there was like a was it ever like did it was it ever like a serious thing is probably played up for laughs okay. but i don't remember because like remember. casey jones is there to make it not like you know who by the way is not in this movie is not here i'm sure maybe there's a sequel. would probably be in a sequel i would guess because there is a sequel hook at the end of this there is with, uh, uh, the with... spreader <laughs> Yeah, he does appear the, the in silhouette. In silhouette, yeah. So yeah, if you're ever wondering throughout this movie, we're Shredder. Yeah, wait for Shredder and the Jury Players. You mean the Foot Clan? Nah, that's a good one. That's a good one. See, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I uh, don't know if I have anything else to say other than please check it out. I don't want this movie to bomb. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was. I was very pleasantly surprised at how much I liked it. Uh huh. Excuse definitely me. one of the the kids loved it the kids, oh, the the kids were having a blast dude there yeah. was a girl a couple seats or, next to you no 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 uh down uh-huh. and she was hot she was literally hopping up and down really she was hot <laughs> i think it was a girl i couldn't really tell but yeah the, oh my god that was so cute at the seat at the end where they're clapping for the turtles someone there was a, no there was a little girl it was the one yeah. next to us uh-huh. she's like six or something five uh-huh. or six and she Oh and, so, and her parents started clapping with. I was that's so, that's, that's that, so cute. That's a that's a family right <laughs> that's there. So, <laughs> I know. I'm like, this is a great. Yeah, definitely one of the best Nickelodeon movies we've, been, we've watched so far. Definitely on the on the uh, better uh, end. On, on the better end. Yeah, absolutely. Because we've been watching a lot of shit. <laughs> yeah, I was I was pleasantly surprised. Surprised. What did you? So you think you agree? I, I think this is great. I could see this. Hey, Spider Verse, the first Spider Verse didn't make that much money at the box office, so that's true. It's they true. only made like what three hundred million. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. So maybe this will be one of the sleep like a sleeper hit. Like yeah. I could totally see this being or like Puss in Boots. That movie didn't make as much on the first weekend, but maybe yeah. maybe word of mouth will help this. I really hope this movie does well. That's all I I want. No, I, I, want, I agree because I want more movies like this. 
if specifically I, animated movies. If I was a parent, I'd be like, oh, good. Yeah. I like that I like my kid to this. Mm-hmm. This was fun. Uh, I like that it... I found stuff funny. It it felt like it wasn't, like, kid funny. Does that make sense to you? Like like DreamWorks humor, I guess. Or, or, joke. or, like, in Illumination, yeah. And then we're going to have the jokes for the parents, kind of. There's no... This felt yeah, pretty yeah. like oh that's just a pretty funny joke. That's really funny, yeah. Yeah, I, I, maybe stuff honestly that kids wouldn't get like the VHS references or yeah stuff, stuff that like adults that. would get. Yeah, but just generally like uh-huh. I feel like a pretty all ages film. Yeah, so all ages that there was a fucking kid watching YouTube during the previews. <laughs> yeah, I, okay, I will say this about um uh I've, I've had like really bad audience uh luck right. recently with the little mermaid i don't do they know about this i don't think you ever told that story I'm there's a, a, little, there, little, little a, a little 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 tangent i have with theater audiences when i went to see the little mermaid the Halle bailey remake there was a like a family uh, maybe like two like twitter stands <laughs> and their mom right next to me who were like, like, just like, would not shut the fuck up during this entire movie. <laughs> what were they saying? What were they saying? They're just saying like, about the movie or yeah, they were like saying like, oh my god, the, the Prince Eric is so hot. Oh my god, Halle, oh ba- my god. Halle Bailey's singing is so good. It's like, yeah, we know this. Shut the fuck up, <laughs> please. And, oh, dude, when the Scuttlebutt song came on, they were singing along to it. I was cringing. Oh, dude, you were cringing? I was cringing. With Tom Clancy. With Tom Clancy. <laughs> and there was someone on my mom's side who had the flash on. <laughs> he was on his phone the entire time. That's fucking hilarious. With this kid. I guess the parents didn't give a fuck and just wanted to leave the kid to enjoy the movie. Did I? Yeah, so you, got, you, got, you continue. And I'm just thinking, I'm like, wow, the audience is fucking suck. This is the polar opposite where we had people being noisy during the, the trailers and the previews. Yeah. But right as the movie when started. When the movie started. Everyone, it's like, it's like. They paid it, attention. It's like when Olimar blows his whistle and like, the pick with <laughs> all are like paying attention. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wow, this is a well behaved yeah. audience. They're like the antelopes when the, when the, yeah, they're when like the lion steps the, on the twig. They're, they're like. <laughs> I'm like, this is how what. A movie audience should be yes. There's yeah. like one or two kids like talking, but it's like oh, it was so it minor was so like like yeah, I can push that off. Or the parent laughing at something and like oh, yeah, yeah, like like and my mom yeah. was like laughing a few times. Like, yeah, pretty, she laughed pretty hard. No, she liked it. Yeah, she loved it. Um, the I had a similar well, not a similar. I had an experience at Oppenheimer. I don't know if I told you about it. No, you didn't. Do you, okay, so at Oppenheimer, we were in the theater and. During the movie, this old bat in front of me <laughs> takes like takes out her phone and starts looking at Wikipedia. Oh, you told the Wikipedia me Wikipedia page yeah. for Robert J. Oppenheimer. Yeah, and I was like, "What the? You're watching it. <laughs> You're literally watching the Wikipedia article. <laughs> what about that would be superior to the? It's the movie. It's a." And then I'm checking my email. I'm like, and like right in front of me, like Mm -hmm. like to the side, right? So the just the brightness full beaming into my my face. Oh my god, yeah. And I was like, dude, I, I, dude, if I had popcorn, I would have fucking thrown it at her. I don't care. Yeah. I would have glared at her Mm -hmm. and I would, no, okay, look, look, bit. Uh, the men are talking. (laughs) (laughs) Oh god. Um, yeah. yeah so teenage mutant, so, mutant mayhem great movie about how interracial relationships are cool there's two interracial relationships there is yeah there is between turtle and woman human woman and yeah. rat and stink bug mutant mutant yeah. yeah why not yeah love wins love wins guys love, love wins i want you guys to take that as the message is that even if you are, if you have stage fright, if you feel unconfident in yourself, if you feel like you're an outcast, you can also fuck a turtle. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or a guy that plays hockey. What do you mean? Or Casey Jones has a hockey Oh, hockey right. Stick. Okay. Sure, well, not yet. Not yet. Not, not, I'm, not I'm yet. I'm sure he... I'm, not yet. <laughs> yeah, not yet. I'm sure we'll get fucking Treader. We'll get... We'll get yeah. Casey Jones. We'll get Krang, maybe. Yeah. Um, oh, Casey Jones. He's gonna he's gonna be the new kid in school. 
<laughs> and he's going to be the romantic rival to yeah, Leonardo. Yeah, that's there that's you go. What that's probably what it's going to be. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. That's what you would have to do if you would even go down that road of <laughs> that, make, making him that, like a romantic thing. That, like that'd be like a very natural thing to do. Yeah, it would fit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's all we have to say. Yeah, mutant, mutant, mutant mayhem. Mutant Please gay, support mutant it. Gay, gay men. Mutant gay men. Mutant gay men. Meet, meet, meeting gay men. Meeting gay men. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, go see it. Go take your kids to it. Because mm-hmm. I know old people watch this program. And <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. You want to call it a day there? I think that's it. Yeah. yeah. I think that's all we had to talk about today. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've. I've. Th- if you put. I go to the intro now. Sorry, the outro now. Outro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you put say this long, thank you for listening to us ramble. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have a question, feel free to leave it down in the comments below, but please phrase it in the form of a question, because mm-hmm. I'm not just going to read your thoughts out loud. Yeah, can you, like, be, like, a hype? Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Do, like, like, do, do, like, like, like that guy from, from RoboCop 3? What the yeah! fuck? I've, I've never seen RoboCop 3. What the I fuck? keep telling you about that clip. The lollipop guild guy? The, lo- the black lollipop guild guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if you guys have seen RoboCop 3, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, just do, like, a little, little like, like, Migos ad lib. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leave it down in the comments below. Yeah. No, they, they always do like a below. Bro. Uh, fuck, fuck. Uh, <laughs> we're, uh, Patreon, check out the last video because it fucking bombed. Skeet, skeet. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can stop. Um, I. What the fuck else did I say? I don't think I got anything else to say. Bye. Yeah, I guess bye, okay? (laughs) Jesus Christ, later.